Hello everyone and welcome to Down Under Championship 2023. Jeremy Austin with you. Annie Sakamoto and Bella Martin with me for the broadcast all weekend. Can't wait to get things going for the second year here at the Gong for the rejuvenated Down Under CrossFit Championship. Now, Annie Sakamoto, we get to the males first, the elite division. Pete Ellis does pretty well last year. Jake Douglas does pretty well. Zane Shelabair Healy in there with a chance. What else happens? Well, how about Dante Karangaroa? This is the guy that just won the New Zealand Nationals. He is definitely going to be a contender amongst all these other super fit men here. Absolutely. And for the females, it's not so much who's in competition, but who's out as well. Sarah Sigmund started pulling out the other day. So did Caitlin Van Ziel. But we've got a host of young ladies ready to take that title. Yeah, number one, we have to look at one of the best female team athletes ever to be on the competition floor. Now going individual, Taylor Williamson. Of course, Georgia Pryor. We have uh, Grace Walton. We have Marnie Sykes, last year's champ. Maddie Sturt still on the floor. It's going to be a heated competition. Emily DeRoy as well, hitting the games this year. And she's back and she wants blood as well. Now, moving to team competition, let's start with the females. I've got a couple in mind. Next, Letica Gold, Christy Hollard, Bryony Chalice, and also Amy Alessi, the veteran. Ten years on the competition floor, but also we've got some girls from your way. We do. We've got the California girls, Danny Spiegel, Emily Rethwell, and Jesse Smith. It's going to be quite a team, but we also have the Fit Mamas who are going to give them a run for their money. Jaylee, Justine, and Ophelia. It's going to be unreal. No doubt, and also when we get to men's competition, I think it's going to be a two-horse race. We've got some really tight teams. I don't know who's going to take it out, but who are we looking at? We're looking at, for the American side, we've got the Ombre Ombres, of course, Chandler, Noah, and Tola, the new add to the team. But we also have the Frogger boys, Royce, Bailey, and Jay, the three fittest in this entire country. Let's see what happens. Absolutely, and don't forget New Zealand as well. We've also got some Masters Adaptive and Futures stuff as well. We can't wait to get things going for the Down Under Championship 2023, and it starts right now. Hello and welcome to the Down Under Championship 2023 live from Wind Stadium, Wollongong, Australia. Jeremy Austin with you. Annie Sakamoto, my trendy sidekick from the US of A, back again. And pretty much a different story for you this year on the way here. Yeah, Rookie, this was such a different travel for me. This time we laid over in Oahu instead of Vancouver. Why we hit Vancouver on the way here last year, I have no idea. Uh, I thought I might get out for a little surf. I only had about 10 minutes on the ground, but it was all the difference in the world. Uh, those 10 minutes uh, split up the flight perfectly, and I am so happy to be back in the ground and at Wynn Stadium. Eight events for the individuals, seven for the teams coming up for the elites, and a pretty grueling one to start with. Oh. I mean, just running in the sand, say no more. And for these teams, running with a ball in the sand. I mean, nothing makes my knees, ankles, hips hurt more than just thinking about it. Uh, but, the, the, you know, the weather is so perfect right now. It was so bad a couple days ago. And the fact that these guys are getting a gorgeous day here in Wollongong, I'm excited. And a big thank you to Destination Wollongong as well. Our international athletes, they've been real busy. Oh, they've gone paddle boarding, they've seen koalas, they've gone skydiving, and then they even did a little bit of surfing, and I got to join in with them on that surfing uh, expedition. It was more like a washing machine than a surf trip, uh, but it was fantastic, it was a ton of fun, it was freezing, but why not do it? We're, we're in Australia, we might as well surf. Uh, even Chandler got out there, hopped on a couple of waves, uh, super fun. Uh, yeah. Oh, I missed out on all of it. <laughs> anyway, 
I've been too busy. Anyway, the third member of our broadcast team, Bella Martin, is way down the beach at the iconic Wollongong Lighthouse with head programmer and director of the Down Under Championship, former CrossFit Games athlete, Rob Forte. We are here. It was sunny this morning. We got a little bit of rain. You can tell we got a little bit damp, but it's starting to clear back up again. Rob, talk me through event number one. Oh, well, they start inside. Uh, they do some pull-ups, some muscle-ups, then they run out along the beach up to here, as you can see behind us, and do some dead ball cleans and then make their way back. Will that rain change any of the strategy that you see happening for these athletes on this event? Uh, well, I did test it with uh, James Newbury yesterday, and as soon as we started, it started raining. The carry or handling the dead ball wasn't too bad, but I think lifting it off the floor it definitely will play a part. Um, but it looks like it was just one rain cloud, so hopefully that's the case and it holds off for the rest of the competition. It's a beautiful beach run that these athletes have to do for the event. Was that your inspiration for programming this? Yeah, so last year at the stadium, you're on top of the hill, you can see the beach, and I'm like, we need to be on the beach next year. So uh, it's great scenery. I don't think you necessarily need to be in the water, but just enjoy the, uh, the sand, the water, and the trip up. You've got quite an outfit on here. Talk me through it. I love it. Well, what's this inspiration for the style? Well, this is my transportation for the weekend. I've done about 20 trips, so I started without a helmet. I know, naughty me. So I've got the helmet on now. It matches my shoes. See? And I think it looks good on you too. Looks good on me. We're going to head back to Wynn Stadium for the Elites, event number one. Thanks, Bella and Rob Forte. Talk about straight down the line, giving us absolutely nothing. How about that? Yeah, I tested it yesterday, but I'm going to give you, like, nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't want to make anybody more nervous than they already are. Exactly. Event number one coming up for heat number one of the elite males and females. Get to the points. And our heat list comprising of a couple of ladies we want to really have a look at. And one of those up at CrossFit Snake at Tamworth at Jake Douglas's gym, Georgia Pryor. Yep, Georgia did so well last year. She's definitely an athlete that we need to keep our eye on the entire weekend. Also, Alice Scott, she was here last year. She did well. Um, definitely on the, on the female side, both of these ladies could be contenders. Great format as well, having the men and the women in the same heat and Isaac Newman what a performance last year and he's one of those up-and-comers did very well at the Torium Pro this year as well yeah I expect this event to go really well for Isaac uh, you know he's tall he's long running on the beach I don't think it's gonna be a problem for him so I'm sure this is gonna be a great start for Isaac oh well it's just less steps isn't it Someone like you, it's a lot of steps. If they oh, want to do another so many cross, steps. Yeah, Bella. <laughs> I love it. It's, you know, it was kind of raining on uh, Bella and Rob, but it is sunny and beautiful here in Wynn Stadium right now. All right. Cool. Um, shall I leave this year? Getting ready for a start here at Wollongong. And as you mentioned, Annie, bucketing down with rain when you went surfing, the washing machine out there. But today, it couldn't have been a more different contrast. And the sun's actually quite hot when you get out in it. So there's just another component these athletes are going to have to deal with, especially on that run. It definitely. And on the pull-up bar, you know, it, those bars can get hot. Obviously, they all have protection on their hands. But you can even see a couple of the athletes have some sun hats on. But like Rob said, it's so great that they're utilizing this venue, it, it, you know, to the best of their capacity. It's so pretty here. Last year, we had a John Cleary Hill, and we had a great view at the top. But this time, to be on the beach, on the sand, and really getting to take in the ocean and Wollongong itself, awesome. Getting ready for a start. I'll tell you what, the late last thing you want to be doing is going out first on this and having to set the pace for the entire male and female elite field. Yeah, and, you know, looking at it, 15 bar muscle-ups right into 20 chest-to-bar pull-ups. It'll be interesting to see how many of these athletes just go unbroken right from the get-go. Underway for heat number one and getting started on the 15 bar muscle -up. So let's talk strategy immediately. 
the run being one kilometre in length. You can make up and lose a little bit of time on that, depending on how you strategize this. Do you go unbroken for your first set and then break up your 20 chest of bars, or how would you approach this in particular? Well, well, I don't know if we should go how I would approach it, how I think a lot of these athletes will approach it, especially in the elite division. I think almost all of them can easily do 15 unbroken bar muscle-ups. Maybe they come off for a second, shake it out before the 20 chest-to-bar pull-ups. But look, rookie, you're going into a run, so you're not worried about fatiguing your grip because you're just going onto that sand. You're, you're more worried about fatiguing your legs right now than your grip, I can guarantee you. I was fortunate enough to chat to Sam Jorolovsky from South Australia, one of our South Australian athletes who was in the Masters division and he mentioned that his core got absolutely fried but once he got to the dead balls, he said about 15 in, the core started to deplete a little bit uh, but that's one thing that I wasn't really considering going to this, I thought it would be a lot more grip strength. Yeah, you know, I think if you haven't run on the sand, especially for a distance like 1K, uh, it's hard to know how taxing that can be on different parts of your body, be it the core, the knees, the ankles. Um, so if you haven't done a lot of running on the sand, a lot of these athletes might be in for a rude awakening. Athletes leaving the stadium now. The iconic, the wildlife field. And athletes leaving pretty much exactly the same time. We get a great shot of the athletes hitting the sand now. And how deep that sand is. Georgia Pryor losing, oh. losing half of her legs as she drives her heels in to try and get some sort of grip. Now, you did this walk yesterday morning. How does it actually feel walking it, let alone running it? I'm telling you, my knees and ankles were feeling it uh, by the end. You can see a lot of these athletes are choosing to run down by the water where the hard packed sand is, which tends to be a little bit easier to run on. And you can see right now all these athletes, it's not as deep, uh, so there's not as much give. But the other day when I, when I walked it in the morning, there was actually more give down by the water. Uh, and I think a lot of that was because the water was coming up further onto the beach, and so I was kind of sinking in. Where they are right now, it's a little bit more hard pack, and it's going to be a lot easier to run on. Tide coming in. Wollongong Beach. And could you imagine if the Wollongong Council had have allowed the directors of the Down Under Championship to put a pull-up bar on oh. the beach? Oh. That would have been outstanding. And as Rob mentioned, we're going to head to the beach next year. I'm assuming it's going to be in the water as well. They're dicing with it as that tide comes in. Well, it reminds me in 2011 uh, at the Games, we did uh, a workout at the Santa Monica Pier. We did, they erected a rig right there on the sand. Um, we did pull-ups. We did push-ups in the sand. It was unbelievable. I, I'm an ocean person, so to be working out, on the beach, for me, nothing could be better. And a great shot from the lighthouse. Got one of our locked off cameras sitting there. And exactly, trying to work out exactly the distance they've got to travel. So one kilometer, it's not a long distance, it's not a short distance, but it's one of those ones, those nasty ones in the middle. It's really hard to gauge on how you should pace it. Yeah, well, and I mean, I think for most of these athletes, the sand is, is going to help you with your pace. Uh, if this was a straightaway, in some ways it might almost be a little harder to pace. I think uh, just running in the sand itself is going to slow a lot of these athletes down. And don't forget, it's 1K there, and they still have 1K to go back. With a little bit of extra fatigue on board as well. Yep. Johan Van Ziel currently in second position. Now, an interesting thing is a lot of the athletes are wearing shirts. That dead ball is going to get really slippery with the sweat that's going to be accumulated on that run-up. So that's a very smart, clever strategy from all of these athletes to sort of get a little bit more grip on yep. that ball. Yep, it is. And, it, you know, like you're saying, Rookie, it seems it might be counterintuitive. It's hot out there. You want to take your shirt off and stay cool. But if that ball gets sandy and or slippery... And you, you know, and you're doing 25 med ball cleans. You can have chafing. You can, which is going to follow you the rest of the weekend. Um, 
So I think it's really smart that these guys are keeping their shirts on. At least for the dead ball cleans, they can always rip them off on the way back. Luckily, there's no dogs on the beach. <laughs> and the stairwell. So your legs have just been driving through this soft sand for the last couple of minutes. Then it's a fact of getting up these stairs. For sure. But you know what? At this point, you're probably so happy to be on solid ground. You might not mind those stairs. Look at this view. And that's a little bit of a break yeah. from Johan and giving those legs a little bit of a rest. Yep. And this is the point in time where you really need to get that heart rate and that breathing under control. Yep. Well, they have these, these gentlemen and these ladies are looking at 25 dead ball cleans. For the men, it's at 70 kilos. The ladies at 50 kilos. So that could get a little taxing for 25 reps. So like you said, Rookie, you need to kind of settle your heart rate back down so that you can stay fast on that ball. Isaac Newman in the pink shirt coming through. Closely followed by a first female, Georgia Pryor. I love these events where they mix the, the males and the females at the same time. It's one of the unique things about our sport. Even though the dead, the dead ball is a little bit lighter for the ladies, of course. You know, we've seen many times in our sport where ladies have beat men in similar events or in the same event. And it's not a gradual stairwell either. Like no. That's pretty sharp on the yep. way up. I'm not sure if you walked up this I to didn't. get... I didn't. Okay. I, I cho <laughs> very purposely chose not to walk up that stairwell. Now, are you a one-step person or do you strategize that by doing less steps by going a double? Take a look at my legs and, and why don't you get... <laughs> And we talk about iconic and epic shots. Oh. And Wynn Stadium all the way down the back on the far left give you an idea of how far these athletes are traveling. And we were fortunate enough to jump up to that lighthouse and get an idea of exactly what was happening. Yep. Uh, I think if you look at the time when they hit the stairs, that 1K run for most of these athletes was only about five or six minutes. It's a great run time in that sand. A couple athletes chipping away at their first med ball cleans. That ball does not look light, rookie. Georgia Pryor getting chipping away at her first couple reps. We throw it back to last year. And the athletes doing the weighted vest run down the path. And there's mm. people walking their dogs and pushing their prams. There's a lot of people out and about in the area around the lighthouse and they're probably going, what are they doing? <laughs> what are these stupid humans doing? <laughs> Moving large loads, long distances quickly is yep. what they're doing. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. I think yesterday, was it yesterday we were out there and we saw what looked like maybe a wedding or something that had just happened. <laughs> Imagine, are these guys coming through the middle of that right exactly. now? Exactly. <laughs> And probably expected this to be a little bit quicker in getting these D-balls done because they seem to be just taking their time a little bit as I, they go through each one. I was just thinking that, you know, there's a, there can be a very natural rhythm on, on medicine ball or dead ball or sandbag cleans like this. And there, these ladies, definitely all of these athletes are taking a little more time in between each rep than I would have expected, which basically just means that run was so tough. We talk about extension, and we talk about triple extension with specifically weightlifting. Athletes using that triple extension to full capacity here to try and generate as much power as they can. Definitely, and it explains why, you know, some of these athletes were complaining about their midlines being so fatigued. Athletes I mean, complaining? You... Really? <laughs> um, I mean, when you look at how much they're using their hips to drive that dead ball over their shoulder. You saw even Georgia has a, a belt on. Try to minimize that fatigue in the midline. But I like her pacing. She's doing her dead ball 
She's in the blue in the middle of that big black mat. She's getting that D-ball done and then walking out to the edge, turning around, coming back, chalking up, going to the next one. Yep. She's got that rhythm going on that she's not going too fast, not going too slow, and probably being able to recover a little bit more as she's going along before the grueling one kilometre back. Right. I mean, there's a point where you realise it's not going to feel any better just because I rest five seconds longer. So I might as well just pick the ball up and get it over my shoulder. This weight is nothing that these ladies can't handle. The point is, who's willing to suffer long enough and hard enough? And while they're continuing on with their dead balls, let's head back to Bella Martin and see what's actually happening at the Lighthouse. Bella, how are we going? But these athletes are still dealing with the wet dead ball. First athlete, Johan, is on his way back to the field to finish up his 1K and then get back onto the rig. I'll tell you what, it's slow out here. It's pretty quiet. All you can hear is the ball coming back down onto the ground and these athletes grunting as they're trying to pick it back up. They were slow to get here, but it looks like they're trying to pick up a little bit of speed going back into that 1K. Starting to see some athletes head back onto that field, Rookie. Thanks, Bella. Grunting. Right, <laughs> I've, I've heard it all now. Imagine that. <laughs> Grunting on a dead ball. Oh. That's people, things people are used to. Loud noise, music, cheering. You're out there now. It's silence, and you can just hear the thud every 20-odd seconds of that dead ball hitting the, the floor. You know, I read a, um, Invictus had a mindset book out and Asia Bartow once wrote in that book he had a little um, vignette in there and he talked about the fact that if you need music or you need people around you need extrinsic factors to drive you when you work out then you're working out for the wrong reasons so I love this there's no music there's just your fellow competitors you can hear some heavy breathing, never mind the <laughs> grunting. There's just the breathing of your fellow competitors and yourself. Can you stay motivated? Can you stay positive and in your own head uh, and just finish the work? You know, I, I really like that there isn't any music, but there are sunbathers to really make you feel bad about your life choices. <laughs> Look at these ladies. It just goes to show what a great day it is out here at Wollongong for day one of the Down Under Championship. Johan Van Ziel in the lead. Georgia Pryor for the ladies. We have two more heats to come, so it's not just a matter of finishing quick here. We're going to back that up and make sure it's a competitive time for all three heats. Exactly. You can never forget that. And we're about halfway through that, that time cap right now. Johan already back. We can say he'll probably safely make the time cap. Uh, but it, it'll be interesting to see if all of these make all of these athletes make that 25 minute time cap. And like you said, Ricky, you're not just competing against your heat; you're competing against the entire field. Start of competition. Uh, talk about Mike Tyson. Need a plan B once you get oh. punched in the face. Here we go. Yep. This is a. You know. In some ways, this is a brutal way to start as far as you think about, um, you know, you're on the rig, you're doing an, a 1K run in the sand, you have to do 25 dead ball cleans, you have to run back in the sand, your knees are hurting, your ankles are talking to you, your feet are talking to you, but I like this as an athlete, as a first event, because nothing is very technical. You just have to be willing to suffer and when you're, you know, you're always mo most nervous right before the first event. And so if something's not super technical, it just has to hurt. It's a little easier to get through. Now, run technique, we talk about that a lot and about efficiency. I think we're throwing the running technique book straight in the ocean uh, on the <laughs> left as they go past. Pretty much this is where your body's now starting to break down. Yep. For sure. You're, you know, a lot of these athletes are probably just kind of shuffling at best. You're having to really swing your arms a lot more than you're used to. You might not be picking your feet up as much. The fatigue is real at this point. We talk about picking your feet up. They're sinking that deep into the soft sand. Yep. It's that much harder to pull them back out. Yep. Again, this is when it really, you really start to feel 
your hip flexors, your knees, your ankles, all those little muscles that don't normally have to work when you're running, they're all firing double time right now. And Isaac Newman, the last to leave the lighthouse and actually starting to walk back. So not a great start nope. for Isaac Newman, the West Australian. Definitely not what I expected. And that tide really coming in. So that's going to change the dynamic of how the sand is compacted. And you said you're a beach girl. How much is that going to change things as that tide comes in? Well, it'll just, it, it'll determine where these athletes run because like I was saying, uh, I, I walked pretty close to the water on Wednesday when I did this course and when the, when the waves come up and I walked through that sand, it really sunk a lot deeper. So again, while you want to be on the hard pack, you don't want to be so close to the water that you're where the water has hit, hit the sand because you'll start sinking in. So it just means these athletes have to choke up on the beach a little bit. Um, and again, that's probably where the sand's going to get a little bit deeper. Alice Scott on her last two dead ball cleans. And then she'll start her trek back and she has got some work to do. 25 minute cap for our first event, the Down Under Championship 2023. And I love the fact that the males and females are in the same heat. How good is that? Always. And it's again, it's something that's very unique, I feel, about CrossFit, uh, that we can have an event where even though the males are competing against the males and the females are competing against the females, no offense, rookie, but anytime we see some of these <laughs> ladies beat the, beat the men, it's kind of exciting. It's good too. Humbling. Miss Sam Briggs has done it <laughs> many <laughs> a time. Hasn't she what? Yes. And hopefully she's tuning in. She spent a lot of time out here, Samantha Briggs. This is a very Samantha Briggs workout, Oh, right? so much. She'd be <laughs> loving it. She should come out here next year. Yep. Johan Van Zyl really sucking them in. Wife Caitlin not able to make the journey down due to injury this weekend, which really is going to open up the door for a lot of other the, ladies. The elite female yep. division. Another withdrawal, Sarah Sigma sod up. Good, couple of uh, big breaths on the way to the rig here for Johan. It'll be interesting to see how he breaks it up. He starts off this time with 20 chest to bar pull ups finishing with the 15 bar muscle ups. I think it's safe to say a lot of these guys can do, and these ladies can do the 20 unbroken chest to bar. What will happen on the bar muscle ups? We've yet to see. Most everybody went unbroken on the way out. Can anybody go unbroken on the way back in? Johan with his 20 chest to bars done. Can he do those 15 bar muscle ups unbroken? Looks like he's about five or six reps in, not struggling one bit. This is going to be a great time to beat from Johan. Quite possibly sub 20 minutes. Less than five reps to go for Johan. And you think about the entire event, you want to come out of the gates hot. Johan Van Ziel is doing just that, and he has set the time to beat for the two. Heats to come, 1903-ish, our unofficial time. You talk about six minutes under a time cap, that's exceptional. Definitely, and again, like you were saying, you want to come out hot on the first event. It is your chance to pick up 100 points, and that's such a great way to start a weekend, right? You have so much momentum going into the other events, so great move from Johan. We don't know if that'll be a first place finish, but safe to say it's going to be a, a really good one. Georgia Pryor about to finish off her bar muscle-ups and look at the glide kip, oh. it's beautiful. She's resting right now. <laughs> and I when mean, it, literally for these, for somebody like Georgia that's that efficient, she can catch her breath on those bar muscle-ups. 
and Georgia just over that 20 minute mark so that five minutes it's a great time for Georgia Pryor and you think about accumulated fatigue over the weekend that's an extra five minutes you're not exercising yep. or working out for yep. that's a great point that's extra recovery you can get from the other competitors that are still out on yep. the field yep that is a really good point and the sun is absolutely beating down here it is so hot and yeah, there was, there's girls sunbathing at the oh, yeah. White House. <laughs> you know it's hot and georgia there's experience for yep. you. Let's right get the shade. Straight in the shade. Let's yep. hydrate immediately. Really smart. There's Isaac. It's shaking those arms out. So not the start we expected. But these gentlemen still have almost four minutes to finish 35 reps on this pull-up bar. 20 chest bar pull-ups, 15 bar muscle-ups. Pretty safe to assume they will finish. Matt Smith and Isaac Newman, top of screen. I call him Smiley, Matty Smith. <laughs> it's not a bad nickname. Yeah, bricklayer from CrossFit Tullamarine. Smiling now. Great finish for him as Isaac Newman now gets to work. So maybe... The rig stuff's good, the other stuff not so good. So that's where you maybe push it a little bit harder and sort of try and claw some time back. Yeah, you have to know where your strengths and weaknesses are in an event like this. You know, we have, it's a classic CrossFit workout. There's a monostructural in the run, there's a weightlifting in the, in the dead ball cleans, and then there's gymnastics. So you have to pick one of those areas where you know you're strongest and that's where you gotta push it. So 24 degrees here currently. That's 75 degrees Fahrenheit. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try and get those conversions for you as well for those who are joining us, uh, not from the Oceania region, but those tuning in from the US of A and right across Europe as well. I know there's a lot of people interested. Seems like a bit of a lull in the sort of the competitive CrossFit space of recently. So this is the first real bang straight back into competition. And I love it. Spring here in the gong, heading into summer, it's beautiful. I was like Newman finishing up, I'm going to tell you what. Not bad. Spring here in Wollongong is way better than winter in Wollongong. Oh, that's what I've heard. <laughs> Although it's funny, in the hotel there's all this uh, Christmas, all these Christmas decorations set up. And is, that too, is it too early? No, not at all. It's just funny. I, it, I feel for you because you have to celebrate Christmas in the summer. But it's December now, but it's not December in the States yet. So you've got one more day. This is true. So you can put your Christmas tree up now. <laughs> Smiley, that's why. Yep. <laughs> Especially now that he's done. Oh, very, very happy he's done. Alec Leach as well. <laughs> Alec Price getting all finished up. <laughs> there we go. That's what we that thought. Expl exactly. <laughs> that explains how you feel at the end of this event. And still some athletes coming back. Still with just over one minute to go on our time cap. So some athletes finding this easy going and some have battled. Yep. And I'm going to guess it, it really comes down to that 1K run. I mean, if you think about how much time that is within this workout, it's at least four to five minutes down, probably five plus on the way back so you know over a third of this event is spent on the sand if you're not a good runner that's going to cost you one of our international athletes jordan malm from crossfit east nashville and spent a fair bit of time in the last month up and down the australian east coast Jordan's going to have to push to finish this. But remember, every event, every rep counts. She's got 20 seconds and 15 bar muscle-ups left. She's got to start chipping away. Finishing 58th in the North American East semi-final this year. And Alice Scott about to come back. But time will beat them all, unfortunately. 
But what a start to competition we've seen. Oh, yeah. Johan Van Ziel and Georgia Pryor really setting our times to beat. And right behind the athletes at the grandstand here at Wynn Stadium is a big athlete recovery area. Oh. You see the ice baths in the background, so those athletes are going to be diving straight in. They're just alongside of us where we're broadcasting from. It's a beautiful setup, Rookie. Christina Libertatakis. <laughs> I like that she uh, <laughs> went with the spelling, went she with went the pronunciation. The, the phonetics, us. beautiful. Yes. This is how you say my name. Don't worry, we got you. Heat one of the elites. Love the men and women going together on this event. Oh, big stair climb finish that first 1K portion of the run. But I think so much of the time either got lost or gained on those 25 med ball cleans. That's definitely where Georgia Pryor, like you said, made a big move. She was just really steady on those med ball cleans, able to finish well under the time cap, almost five minutes. All the male athletes finishing, and then almost all of the females in this first heat. Two more to go. Can somebody beat Johan's time? We'll get some official times for you shortly. But Georgia Prize glide kip. Yep. If you can minimize fatigue and increase your efficiency, this is where it's happening. Heat two coming onto, when I say field of play, it's definitely a field. It's a <laughs> lush green pasture. And Christina Libertatakis, podium from last year's Down Under Championship. And a few internationals in here as well. Amy Kringle in lane number five. Keep your eye on Daisy McDonald, another former gymnast. Absolutely exceptional. Thor Heinel, another West Australian in 16th. And also and to Toby, Toby Crouch. Toby Crouch. There's not some bad genetics there, are there? <laughs> George Regis in the blue shirts. CrossFit Adelaide. Congratulations to CrossFit Adelaide as well, ticking over the big 15 years of affiliation oh, wow. with CrossFit. We beat them by one day, CrossFit Gold Coast. That's, a, that's impressive. 15-year <laughs> affiliate. I it's, mean, a, that's... it's a long time. You've been going longer than that, though. I'll be 16 uh, this month, December. Yep. So not that much longer. Some of the OG of OGs. Oh, I'm right? sure a lot of the CrossFit Adelaide peeps are watching. And event number one, you see seat number two, it's get to the point. Let's get to the point. 15 bar muscle ups, 20 chest to bar pull ups, and then just a nice easy 1K beach run. Uh, 25 dead ball cleans when these athletes get up to the lighthouse. Beautiful view up there. They're going to run back the way they came, 1,000 meters on the beach. 20 chest bar pull-ups, finishing with 15 bar muscle-ups. 25-minute time cap. Can any and or all of these ladies and gentlemen finish in heat two and get to the point? You know what, Jess Green, talk about laser-focused. She's got the sunnies on, but... Focus the job at hand. A lot of these ladies have their hats, sun hats on. And Jess Green, one of those other, I'd say you could say fortunate athletes to have 13 years as a competitive gymnast under your belt. <laughs> you know, I think though, Rookie, as much as the gymnastics is part of this workout, I think so much is gonna come down, so much more is gonna come down to the run and definitely that med ball. Well, you mentioned it after heat one, that heat dead ball took it out of these athletes a lot more than we expected. But Christina Libertatakis, I think she just might have a little bit of a push and balance of all the components to do pretty well here. And again, this is a classic CrossFit workout. It's a triplet. It's got monostructural, weightlifting and gymnastics in it. I mean, what a brilliant start to a competition. Nobody can say, hey, that wasn't for me, because it's got a little something for everyone. Rob Forte, director down under championship and also the head programmer. Spoke to him yesterday on the podcast. We'll just wait till these athletes get underway. And starting with their 
20 chest bar pull ups after they get through these 15 bar muscle ups. But Rob said he went through and tested all of these events and he started with a blank canvas and he had to go along and make adjustments along the way. So he had to keep retesting them all the way. So he didn't have people doing it for him. He actually did the whole lot. And you don't often see that from competition organizers. If ever, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's great. And just to know that- Tell him Malitsky, we're calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> but to know that, you know, he believes enough in his programming and he wants to make sure that the event is programmed effectively and efficiently for all of these athletes to not only demonstrate how fit they are but to be successful and that's what's great you know Rob is a former games athlete he knows what it's like to, to be in an event to be on the, the competition floor and he wants to make sure that these athletes have their best experience Jack Jeffrey front of screen Phil Heinel Thor spoke to him last night as we were having dinner and funny story at dinner anyway, we'll get back to that in a sec. But he he's just coming in as the underdog. He's a full-time worker, so he doesn't train full-time, he just trains when he's able to. And he said he gets his movement up by doing his physical laboring work, which you don't often see. So yeah, we go back to last night's dinner, and who rocks in but like the famous singer Kamal, who we we were just beside ourselves and you sat there and chatted to him for probably about an hour. Well, you thank goodness you were there to tell me who it was because I just thought this was some random gentleman that I had set my stuff in front of his uh, chair and I felt bad and then all of a sudden he's chatting with me and then the next thing I know, he's reciting the Gettysburg Address <laughs> to me. And then serenading you. And then serenading me. <laughs> it, was, like it was so fun. Random things you've seen in the gong for a hundred. Oh, yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Random things I've seen in life for a hundred. <laughs> he was oh. such a nice gentleman. Phil Heinel. He looks really comfortable on the sand right oh. now. Big time. And you think about the fortunate nature of where we live in Australia, and most of us live on the water in some capacity, either over in Western Australia where Thor's from, over in Perth, or right here where we are in Wollongong. If you're down in Melbourne, you're down at the beach, like it's, we are so fortunate to be so close to the water. Well, and you really see that, like when we're at the CrossFit Games, almost always the Australian and New Zealand athletes have no trouble when the water comes out or any beach events come out. Um, and that just speaks to, like you're saying, Jeremy, how comfortable Aussies are around the water. If you look at the pack behind Thor, he's leading the charge at the moment. I think that's Amy Kringle for the ladies in the blue and black in second. Yep. Fun you... fact on Amy Kringle, born in the Isle of Man. Any idea where that is? <laughs> no idea. So I you... saw that though on the notes. So, I was like, that's so you've got, kinda cool. So you've got the UK and you've got Ireland and there's a tiny little island in the middle of them. Believe it or not, I've been there. It's random. How and why? I was working there years and years ago and I managed to get to the Isle of Man and that's where they run the famous TT race, which is a motorcycle race around the island. And we're talking speeds of like upwards of like 160 miles per hour. Oh my God. Like it's ridiculous. So Google that after this. Okay. Yeah. But Amy Kringle, cutting down some time on Thor Heinel, even though they are in different divisions. As you yes. mentioned yes. in heat one, you want to take the cake, don't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bragging rights, right? How many guys did I beat on this event? You can see some of the athletes, though, I, we've seen it, they've cut in a little too close to that water line. And again, that's where it, the sand gets a little deeper again because uh, the water's hit it and made it kind of wet, almost like quicksand. So there is a sweet spot where you're not right on the water's edge, uh, but you're close enough to take advantage of a little bit of that hard pack. You can see already, though, the arms are having to work a lot more to to get them through that sand. Again, if you haven't ever run, and I'm not talking about a fast walk, I'm talking tried to run on the sand, it is a whole different beast. And there's a whole lot of sand there today as well. There is. Thor looking pretty comfortable though. Doesn't look that packed down at any particular point. Mm -hmm. Close to the edge, obviously, but Toby Crouch now moving into that third position for the males. 
But that's about a 30 metre lead that Thor Heinel has still oh. got and maintained that lead from the get go. If not extended it just a bit. And some dark clouds starting to loom. We are expecting some rain at about 4 or 5 o'clock. It's currently 12.30 p.m. Australian time, Australian Eastern time. And the stairs just to the right hand side and looks fairly packed down before you get to the yep. stairs. So yep. a little bit of reprieve before you get to the stairs. And what an iconic shot of oh. the surf coming in and the lighthouse in the background. I think this is smart, you know, Thor. I think he should keep utilizing those rails on the oh, way Oh, I was up. going to say. Yeah. Use, Use your upper body. <laughs> Propel yourself, exactly. Let's see him slowing down towards the top. Now, Amy Kringle used to be a long jumper, so she's used to playing around yep. in sand. Yep. She, look, she's got a towel with her, too. Just very, in case. very clever. Yep. In case that ball is wet and or sandy. Sub, sub six minute run, five minute run for all of these athletes. First 1K. As the athletes start to make their way to the mat and pick up that tee ball for the first time, let's head down to Bella Martin for a check in and see how the temperature is down there. It is absolutely beautiful out here now. We've got a little bit of wind, so it's probably not so bad on one end of the run. They're going to have to be facing it on the way back. First four athletes are here now, but I'll tell you what I'm most impressed by. Amy Kringle is in the mix with the men. That's something you love to see when the guys and the girls are competing on the same competition floor. How the girls stack up against the guys. Amazing to see her second out here to get to the D-balls. We are just seconds away from seeing how they take on this next portion of this event. I'll tell you what, sounds pretty heavy in their breathing. So we'll see how they fare versus heat number one. Uh, Bella, can you tell, are there, are there a lot of uh, you know, standby or people looking around, people that aren't part of this event that are kind of wondering what the heck are these athletes doing? Oh my goodness, absolutely. And it's been hilarious to watch their reactions. So they come up here and they're looking, what is going on? They're asking all the questions. What's happening here? And that is our favorite thing, you know, being in CrossFit. Let's talk about CrossFit and why we do it. Also, what a show to be watching. Do you want to be inspired? This is how you're going to get inspired. Well, a few dark clouds starting to loom in the background of our shot that we're currently seeing. Are they sort of any sort of going to be a dampener on what's going to be happening in the next sort of hour or two? It's possible. We saw right in heat number one, the dead balls were a bit wet and the athletes had to chalk up a little bit more because it really does rub on your forearms and that friction adds up as this workout's going along and as your forearms start to blow up a little bit. Fingers crossed that the rain holds off so that heat three has an even chance to heat one and two because the dead balls are dry. The sun is shining here on the lighthouse for now. Keep my fingers crossed. I don't know if it's a thing in, in the States or not, but we slip, slop, slap here. I don't know if you know what that means. Slip, slop, slap. Slip on a shirt, slop on the sunscreen, slap on a hat. That's what we do out here. Sun protection all the way, Bella. I hope you've got some sun cream on out there because it is really cooking down here at the stadium. So I can only imagine what it's like up there. It's perfect, and I'll tell you what, it makes me want to move out here. <laughs> it's easy, you know where we are. We'll get back to Bella Martin in the middle of heat number three. And that far left corner of your shot right now is where Wind Stadium is. Uh, when these athletes finish, they're actually getting to the top of the stairs and they can see Wind Stadium in the background. Right. And I've got to- I've, I've got to go all the way okay. back there. <laughs> I've got to get there. And it looks like the, the hill up to where the, the, like there is a little hill, even once they get to the top of those stairs, Bella, to get up to the grass area where the dead balls are. Is that right? She's sunning. <laughs> She's having a margarita sunning herself on the top of that hill. I don't blame her. We'll get back to Bella in a sec. And the athletes have to go around the circular fountain just near the lighthouse. And Amy Kringle in the black and the blue center of screen. Your leader coming in and now three reps 
remain between her and the, tr I'm going to call it a trudge back. It's going to be a trudge. Definite trudge. She's been so consistent on that ball. Dumps it off the shoulder, basically turns around, takes a breath, steps right back to it. She's done. She's already back on the run. A trained nurse and only starting CrossFit in 2021. Poor thing. Started so, looked, I started so long ago. Right. And I'm nowhere near as good as any of these. You started the, the 50 year old division <laughs> in 2021, didn't you? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Amy heading down. A great shot before she hits the stairs. She did great work, Matt Dubal. Talk about iconic shots around the world, about when you're going to competitions. Does it get any better than this? Oh. <laughs> a bluff with a lighthouse with ocean all around you. So beautiful. Girls in bikinis, <laughs> guys with a, with a rugby ball watching her. <laughs> this is it. This is the good life right here. Thor Heinel, the leader, going into the D-Balls. Nowhere to be seen just yet. So Amy Kringle leading the entire pack. And yep. I don't think she really has to worry looking over her shoulder either. No. Nope. I think Johan was, uh, he was at about the 13 minute mark, maybe just partway through this run. So she's right on track for about where Johan was at this point in the event. So Amy is a clear minute ahead of any other competitor. Daisy McDonald in second, Thor Heinel in third, then Adam Mancy, Ethan Vandervelden. And there's Toby Crouch. Oh, doesn't look like he's that comfortable. That's not the sign for, I feel great. Where's my margarita? At all. Thor and Daisy heading back out. And you think about how much power output they've just gone through. It's a steady state run getting there. Yep. Then it is heart rate up. It is breathing heavy. And now you've got to get that under control quick. How do you do it? You, you, you have to just try to settle yourself a little bit. Um, you know, I think letting yourself breathe a little bit heavy and then every few steps, trying to settle back go, down, set. taking a big breath. Go on the hard set. Running is so much, whether it's on the sand or on the cement or on a runner, running is so much about your breathing and setting a rhythm to your pace. If you've ever worked with Chris Hinshaw, you know, he says it doesn't matter what Good your day. step pace is, but it has to be your pace. You have to figure out how many steps you take per breath, and you have to find that as quickly as you can. Zach Poulos heading back, and Amy just trying to that is a ne trudge. negotiate cleverly. You know where the flags are sitting. They're our beach flags. You obviously yep. have those in the States as yep. well. It's a safe place to swim. But they're going to be putting them in a spot where it's well compact. Right. So they're, they're going to stand up for the entire day. So that's very clever from, from Amy. Sort of trying to stay as tight as she can to those flags as she comes through. Yes, yeah, she has a nice lead on Thor. They're halfway through this event. If you don't know what the event is, it is 15 bar muscle ups, 20 chest to bar pull ups, then a 1K run, we'll say that in quotes, along the beach, 25 dead ball cleans. For the ladies, it's at 50 kilos and the gentlemen, 70 kilos. Then they're gonna run back down the beach to where they came, finishing up with 20 chest to bar pull ups, 15 bar muscle ups, and it sounds like the birds approve. <laughs> How off-putting. Somebody's yelling. we got so many seagulls. We saw them all yesterday sitting on the railing up at the lighthouse. Oh, yeah. Maybe they're all just... All in a line. Hey, at least we're not hearing just dead balls hitting the ground. We've got some squawking going on. Wildlife. Andrew Samble back at the lighthouse struggling a little as Amy Kringle is dominating heat number two for the men and the women. Yep. The surf in the background, it was rough when you went surfing. Other day. I don't think I've seen surf that rough like for a long time and you got right out in there oh well the the surf instructors that, that were leading our group said this was probably the worst day of surfing they have ever seen it was stormy that day uh the current was really bad it was just kind of a mess out there but 
having said all of that, it was still a ton of fun. It's always great to get wet, get in the ocean. Amy Kringle, I'm sure, would love to jump in that surf right about now. And as a form of recovery, I'm not going to be surprised if too many athletes aren't getting in the surf. And it looks as though Andrew Samble is in a bit of bother at the lighthouse oh, and no. he's possibly withdrawn from, I'm not sure if it's going to be the entire competition or just event number one, mm. but he's in a little bit of bother. I'm not sure if it's an injury or not. And emotion really getting the better of Andrew Samble up there. Mm. Always wear his heart in his sleep, but Amy Kringle, here we go. Yeah. Not too far away from entering the field. She's just about, just over nine minutes from that time cap and only 20 chest bar pull-ups and 15 bar muscle-ups separate her and that finish line. The speed she got out onto the sand, you look at what the time is now, we're just hitting 16 minutes. Yep. She's going to be finished in probably the next two to three. Yep. And now we're finally on some hard sand and we've a fair way back to where Thor Heinel is. But Thor, he's still got a little I bit was, of time to where Johan's time is. Yeah, I was going to say, and he actually still, you know, he, you can see a little struggle on his face, but his his cadence, his run doesn't look as labored as I was, I was, I would expect at this point in that run. So I think Thor could have a very respectable finish. The thing about talking about good cadence, oh, I've just seen good cadence beautiful. for the last 16 and a half minutes. And you know, I think the difference is for Amy, she could recover on those dead ball cleans. She was fast, she was efficient. She has just about eight minutes of that time cap. Look at, she didn't even chalk up, put her hands right on that bar and start chip, started chipping away at her 20 chest of bar pull-ups. Can we talk about the butterfly pull-up for speed in competition? We had a very good conversation about kipping yes, versus did. strict versus butterfly yep. and when to utilize them. And this is exactly the time you need to utilize this skill set. Yep. It's fast, it's efficient. Quick little wipe of her hands. Again, Amy was the one that was smart enough to bring a little towel with her. And the underdog, Phil Heinel. I love it, he's got about 90 seconds to try to beat Johan from the heat before. And he's so broad. I was standing there talking to him last night and he's so wide in his upper body and I'll tell you it's rock hard <laughs> <laughs> there is a whole lot of muscle going on for Thor Heinel you gave him a hug did you I, rookie? I tried to it was like hugging a block of concrete <laughs> when, when when butter meets concrete yeah yep. Daisy McDonald on as Amy Kringle starts her bar muscle ups That pocket muscle, oh. chipping away at 20 chest to bar. No trouble for Thor. Going very high, almost to his yep. sternum even. You no know, trouble for Daisy McDonald either in the purple and black. Ethan Van der Velden coming to the bar as well as Amy Kringle. Adam Mancy, Bill Athletic on the Gold Coast, top of screen now. Broken these bar muscles up in three or four sets, but she still has a ton of time. She's gonna be Johan's time. Wow. Sub 19 minutes. Unofficial time of 18.50 for Amy Kringle. And if you're wondering coming in how she was gonna do, that's exactly how she's gonna do. Phil Heinel getting done under Johan's time as well and finding the only bit of shade on the field Any there bit is. Of shade, yep. Oh, he looks happy. Great job from Thor. Michelle Hayes on the bar. Ethan Vanderbilt, Adam Manty. Toby Crouch at the top of the screen now, removing the shirt once the dead balls are done. That's yep. a very impressive strategy as well. A little uh, rollover from Daisy McDonald there. <laughs> Pick the gymnast. Yep. What's the easiest way to get off the bar? Off the front. It's like less than five.
five left for Daisy McDonald. Ethan Vanderbilt just having a little bit of trouble with that last transition into the lockout. And Daisy McDonald will finish up as the second female. Ethan cooked. Lisa Burrell. A married name now, Lisa Campbell originally. Lisa Burrell, no stranger to the gymnastics capabilities. Ex pole vaulter. Michelle Hayes finishing up. One of the athletes that we talked about early on in this event, Christina Livetakis, still not yet back to Wynn Stadium. Jess Green. Toby Crouch. This looks like it's a lot more fatiguing than I thought. Is this Christina coming back in now? It is in the yellow and back to the right of screen. Still a good amount of time to get that gymnastics work done. I'm not sure where he, she put her shirt. Jack Jeffrey. <laughs> Looking at his oh, yeah. <laughs> judge while are we, he's are doing we the done movement. <laughs> Jess Green on her last little bit of this workout, those bar muscle ups. Daisy going right into the bar Christina. muscle ups. Sorry, Christina going right into the bar muscle ups from those chest to bar. Plenty of time left for both of these ladies to finish. Zach, Zach Poulos and George Regas. Not too far apart coming to the rig now. Jess Green and Christina Libertatakis about to finish off. Christina, this has been a really good set of bar muscle ups yep, for her, yep. like transitioning straight in. Yep, and you can see her, she'll rest on top of that bar every once in a while, catch her breath. She's so fast at those bar muscle ups. Rodriguez on those chest to bar. Very impressive. Christina made up a lot of time wow. when she hit that pull up bar. Bulos and Regas still battling. Now the problem with heat number three coming, they're going to run out of shade. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere to hide when you're done with that workout. But not a super hard amount of volume gymnastically. No. Just no. enough to test them. Yep. Well, and, you know, again, I love this event because it has a little bit of everything. And you could see in somebody like Christina Livetakis, who suffered a bit on that run, she was able to make up some time on the bar. So there's enough gymnastics movement uh, that you can you can chip away at some seconds lost on something like the, the dead ball cleans or the run. Regas finishing up. Zach Poulos still at... The bar muscle ups, one of his favorite movements, probably not his favorite anymore. And he's Whoa. just struggling with that transition. Yeah. Well, it goes to show you how fatiguing the other two movements, the, the 1K beach run and those dead ball teams can be. I mean, when do you think the last time was that Zach failed a muscle up? Oh. Again. Sam, Sam Jorolovsky, when we were talking to him, talking about how fatiguing it is on the core, and that's going to be the first thing to go. And if your core fails you now, it's going to be really difficult. With two reps to go now. 30 seconds, so it's going to be tight. Oh, you just got to pop that hip. He really needs it. There it is. And Zach Poulos. Finishing up. 
You could just tell from his shoulders, from that body language, he is exhausted. And a great time cap as well. I know Rob tested this one as well. He tested the team competition with, with James Newbury yesterday. Very appropriate time cap. You can see, we saw in heat one, a couple people not make it. But most making it somewhere around that 25 minute time cap. Two of three heats done, one heat to come for the elite males and females. But what a incredible start from the girl in black and blue, Amy Kringle. Yeah, Amy Kringle, she wasn't necessarily the best on the first side of the bar, but she made up some definite time on that run. She was able to close the gap a little bit on Thor, who was the leading male in that heat. It was on that dead ball clean, though, that Amy Kringle made up so much time. She just would clean it, turn around, pick it back up, and what do you know, she's the first one on the run, not just at the females, but the males and the females. And then, looked like she had no problem on the run back door, still holding his pieces first within the male group. And then Amy, absolutely no problem back on that pull-up bar, 20 unbroken, quick little break, finishes the 15 bar muscle-ups, well under that 20 minute time cap. Thor, not that far. Uh, behind her, close to Johan's time, who set the time to beat in the heat before, so great job from Thor. And again, almost every athlete in that heat finishing this first event. You can see how happy Thor is to be done. Big time, third heat coming right now. Big thank you to one of our major sponsors, Reebok, for their support of Down Under 2023. In 2016 at regionals, I remember looking up in the crowd and seeing like my mum and my pop starting to sort of cry. That's when I realised I'd like qualified for my first CrossFit game. It was a really special moment. At Down Under this year, I just want to test myself. I want to be standing on top of the podium again. My goal for the season is to qualify for the CrossFit Games. I'm not scared anymore. I'm putting myself out there and I'm going to give it everything I've got. And for a young lady who's been to the CrossFit Games four times already, but sat on top of the podium this time last year. She was so close to the Torian Pro this year. Yeah, but just missing out by one spot. I mean, that is so heartbreaking. But she still got that drive. She went, obviously, yep. as a youngster for the first time back here at Wynn Stadium. It seems like, honestly, it seems like so long ago that she went for the first time. Oh, she looks so young in that video, right? She's in lane number three, and we've got a couple of heavy hitters oh. in here. Grace Walton, Emily DeRoy, and I'm so excited to see Taylor Williamson. Join. What about Annika Greer? I mean, that's another. Keep going down the list. Yeah, Marnie Sykes, my... Julia Hannaford. <laughs> right. The list gets longer. And to the males. Dante Karangaroa, who just won the New Zealand Nationals. Going to be great to see him. Jake Douglas, who just got off of his rookie appearance at the Games. But you know, hot on his tail is Peter Ellis, who was third place last year. He's going for the crown this year, especially with Jake Crouch on a team instead of individual. Grace Walton left, Maddie Sturt middle, Emily DeRoy right. We have got a lot of stuff to get through, and this is event number one. This is what they're chasing down, rookie. Get to the point, and that they will. 15 bar muscle ups, 20 chest to bar pull ups, and then a nice little cruisy beach run, 1,000 meters, 25 dead ball cleans. Once they get to the lighthouse, back they come. 1K beach run, 20 chest to bar pull ups, 15 bar muscle ups. It's all against a 25 minute time cap, but don't forget, you're not just against that time cap or your heat, you're against the two heats that went before you. Just the one heat, heat two with Amy Kringle and Thor Heinel. <laughs> Very good times to beat. Does your strategy change now knowing but the times that have come up before in the previous heat have hit that level. 
No, I think again, this is an event where you really have to play to your strengths and weaknesses. Uh, so if you're good at the gymnastics, you have to go for unbroken on the gymnastics. If you're good at running, you have to push the run. You have to bait everybody else to try to keep up with you and hope you smoke some bees out of the hive. And then if you're good on the D-ball clean, which Amy Kringle was amazing, you can see how much time you can make up on that D-ball clean. So I think it's really important to just stay in your lane, know what you're good at, and do what you're good at really well. Rama slaps. Everybody's going to go unbroken here, rookie. Well, they have to, as a couple of athletes oh, wow. like Grace Walton, Maddie Stewart, start breaking them up. <laughs> well, I, I think no, it's what they're, they're they're jumping off in between those bar muscle ups and the chest to bar. I don't think that's a bad idea. It's a quick little shake out. Try to keep the heart rate down just enough that you're breathing okay on that run. Christina Libertakis heat two comes onto the bar muscle ups and then transitions straight into the chest to bar pull ups. But Jake Douglas out early. This is going to be interesting. I don't imagine Jake is going to be the best on that beach run, but you never know. This is where he could surprise us. Maybe he's just excited to get to that dead ball clean. As they head out to the run, Zach Thomas is our final athlete for the men. Boy there. Everybody done on that pull-up bar in under two minutes. So now it's how they handle this first 1K in the sand. Again, this is what we love about CrossFit. Men and women in the same event, not competing necessarily against each other, but they're competing for bragging rights. If you beat one of the, the boys, you get to brag about it, ladies. Some of these athletes to choo choosing to run really close to that water line. And I love how you can hear the waves just rolling oh. in. Surely it's got to be soothing. I was going to say. As you're going past and just trying to calm yourself down yep. a little and you're just listening to the ocean and athletes having to wear shoes on the competition floor in the stadium but also on the beach as well and that you know that could make that run a little bit tougher uh, on the other hand when you get up there if if the mats where the balls are hot at all it's going to save their feet so really in the long run i think it's great that they're making these athletes wear shoes it's a smart move Jake Douglas handling the first part of this run better than I would have expected. Look at all these beachgoers throwing seaweed, burying their legs in the sand. Here comes a bunch of... Somebody that's just kicking in. Yep. I like this guy just sitting here at the bottom, just sitting... They're let, burying let, their legs in the sand. Let, letting their waves roll in. A lot of fitness happening. A lot of tide really coming in. Jake Douglas <laughs> oh, really right getting smashed with that. Saying Chelebe Healy, the lead. Jake Douglas, you can't miss that frame running down the beach. And he's choosing to just run right through the water. I, I don't know that I would choose to do that, rookie. It's You think about point A to point B, you need to get there as quick as you can. You're going to be uncomfortable anyway. Yeah. Athletes are coming in. You're not just going to have one pair of shoes. You're going to have right. four or five pairs of shoes. So that's okay. So you just got to put up with this for 20 odd minutes from now on. Yeah, but if you get sand in those shoes and you get chafing and you get blisters and that sits with you for the rest of the weekend, that's tough. And I don't know. I mean, look, he looks like he's. Oh, it's Pete in Ellis, in fact. I thought it was Zane Shelby. Healy, it's Sneaky Pete. See, I told you he was sneaky. sneaky. And coming in, he's one of those athletes that you earmarked coming in podium last year. And he got a little bit emotional in the interview last year about the sacrifices he's made to get here. And he knew straight away how many sacrifices because it meant so much. So he 
He welled up a little bit. But well, Pete Ellis under the tutelage of Matt Riley, an old head here at Wynn Stadium. We've seen Matt on the competition floor and many times. Look, so far this competition bodes so well for Pete Ellis. Jay Crouch, last year's champ, is out. Jake Douglas, who did make it to the games this year, there's no one rep max lift, which bodes a lot better for Pete than it does for Jake. But you talk about that experience going to the CrossFit Games, a lot of lessons learnt oh. from Jake Douglas going there. And he'd Priceless. be the first first one to put his hand up and go, wow, that's a, it's a different kettle of fish over yep. there. Yep. There's Zane Shelabere Healy in touch with Jake Douglas, and you wouldn't be too far away, Matty Sturt. No. And smart, do you see he had a long sleeve shirt on? So again, you know, Bella was talking about those balls being wet, being sandy, chewing up your arms. So a long sleeve shirt is actually a great idea when it comes to the handling those dead balls. Marty Sykes in the white top coming up. Grace Walton not too far behind. And Jamie Goodwin, a good, very welcome return to competition at Wynn Stadium. And Jamie having a little baby Mateo. So having a couple of years off. Monica Greer there. If you're not used to the Australian sun, it beats down oh, yeah. on you hard. Yep. Pete with a good pace on that ball. And while well, Sneaky Pete gets to work on his own, let's head to the point. We're getting to the point with these athletes. We're going to get to the <laughs> point with Bella Martin, who's looking at these athletes pounding away with these dead balls. Bella, what is happening out there? Well, Pete is the first athlete to get here and start chipping away at these dead balls. A couple of the other guys are coming in, but I'll tell you what, that recovery time that some of these athletes are taking to get onto the dead ball might not work out for their advantage as they're not that much faster than the previous heat. Maddie Sturt just getting onto the dead ball, trying to run down Amy Kringle's time. I'm thinking it's going to be tough to beat from the previous heat, but the ladies are starting to flow in, so we'll see what happens. Bella, it looked like that's really where Amy Kringle made all of her time was on that dead ball. Would you say that that is where, what the crux of this workout might be? for a lot of these athletes? Absolutely. I mean, we've talked different strategies all weekend, and I think one thing we didn't really t you know, discuss together was how quickly you're going to have to attack these dead balls, but also what kind of recovery time you're going to allow yourself to have going back onto that 1K run. It's a fast run. It's not that long. It's not short enough to sprint, but these ladies are going to be a little bit more tired if they're pushing the dead ball We'll see what happens now, the women's field. They're all here with the men. We'll see if any of these ladies can catch up to Pete. See what happens, just like in the previous heat. Bella, we've just seen Emily DeRoy get to her dead ball for the first time, and she looks a little fatigued. Also, Taylor Williamson for the first time. It seems as though the taller ladies have struggled a little bit in getting there. The shorter athletes doing pretty well. You're not wrong. Both of these ladies kind of taking a little bit more time, picking that ball up, looking at it, trying to decide, am I ready to make another rep or not? Whereas the athletes that are a little bit on the shorter side are seeing quicker cycle time with the dead ball. But something you're gonna see also, the field is young. So a lot of these younger ladies are hungry, trying to prove themselves, especially in the previous heat. You saw them really attacking the dead ball. They're doing the same thing here. Thanks, Bella, and we'll see you very soon for some post-event interviews. Grace Walton, one of those youngsters who is really starting to put her foot down on the accelerator in the Oceania region. She wants a spot to the Games. She's not content, I'll tell you. No, and if ever there was a spot to, to make your mark, it's definitely at the Down Under Championships. You know, let all of these other Oceania ladies know, hey, I'm the one you should be worried about. Pete Ellis running in front of the camera so he is the first athlete to depart the point and head back to win stadium you can see like bella was saying a lot of these ladies you know maddie sturt attacked those first five reps pretty quickly you can see that the dead ball starting to take its toll 
She's taking a little more time in between those reps, and that is where in the heat previous, Amy Kringle made up so much time. Talk about the programming with Rob Forte and the gymnastics. 15 bar muscle up, 20 chest bars, 25 dead balls. It's not a whole, whole lot, but it's enough to entice you to get into it. And by the time you realize you're in that far, it's too late to pace it any differently. Right. Well, again, <laughs> and that's why you really have to make sure you know where your strengths and weaknesses are in this event. And you got to stay in your lane. You can't let somebody bait you. If you know you need to break up those gymnastics movements, break them up. Pete Ellis about to start his descent down the stairs and really getting a good lead over the rest of the pack. If you're just tuning in for the first time, wherever you are right around the world, thank you for joining us. Maddie Sturt leading the females and Pete Ellis leading the males in heat number three of event one. Get to the point. They've done that, these two athletes, and they'll be on their way back now. Both of these athletes definitely going to push the times to beat from Thor and Amy. They're at the halfway mark of this event. And if you're just tuning in, we are getting to the point. These athletes started on the bar with 15 bar muscle ups into 20 chest to bar pull ups, a 1,000 meter beach run. When they got to the lighthouse, they had to do 25 dead ball clean, 70 kilos for the gents, 50 for the ladies, 1K beach run, and then back onto that pull-up bar for 20 chest bar pull-ups and 15 bar muscle-ups. Times to beat were set in the heat previous to this one, heat two. Amy Kringle, unofficial time of under 19 minutes. Amy Kringle, 18.52, time to beat. She was so fast on that whole thing. And you can see Pete Ellis, again, just choosing to run through the water. And then, of course, Johan Von Ziel, 19.07 from the first heat, actually. So Thor was close to that time, but Johan hung on to the time to beat from heat one. Monica Greer, only a... Looks like maybe one med ball clean to go. Tyler Williamson as well. Now Zach Thomas has made up a lot of time. There is the New Zealand Nationals champion, Dante Karangaroa, with Emily DeRoy. Dante, a youngster coming into the competition. And Dante was telling me, or his coach was telling me yesterday, that you know, not only has he gotten fitter, he's 20 kilos lighter. 20 kilos, that's not 20 pounds. 20 kilos lighter than that's when a, he started on his fitness journey. That's a blue plate. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That's very impressive. Maddie Sturt down the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Just tell by the way she runs. And that perky pony? Yeah, the perky pony, the tide. Coming in even more, and Pete Ellis with about a 50 meter lead over Maddie. But it's not what they're doing out here, it matters what happens when they get to the rig and how they're going to structure and strategize that rig time because they want to minimize the time their grip strength is under fatigue and the amount of time they're spending in the sun because there is barely any shade on the field where right. we're looking over right now. And there's no shade where Pete Ellis is right now nope, either. Nope. If he wanted to, he could hop to his left and go for a quick dip. But we saw, like you said, Rookie, we saw actually Christina Levitatakis in the heat previous make up a lot of time that she had lost uh, on the run portion of this event on the pull-up bar. She went 20 unbroken chest-to-bar pull-ups right into 15 unbroken bar muscle-ups. Julia Hannaford. Just ahead of her was Taylor Williamson about to descend down the stairs. Tell you one a person who has caught up a lot of time is Snacky Thomas. Zach Thomas <laughs> was one was one of the last athletes out of the field yeah. and he has made up a lot of time on those dead balls. And Pete not too far away from coming back into the stadium. Crowd really starting to build now. They're all in the shade. They are. There's a few sunning themselves on the hill. I see one kid rolling down the hill. Rolly polies. That's <laughs> what we do here. And Pete, only about 20 meters to go before he hits 
Some comp Solid ground. Some compact stuff. Yeah. Now, Jake Douglas, one of the first athletes there. Yep. And those dead balls starting to cause some dramas well, with and some I, athletes. And really because I wouldn't imagine a weightlifting movement would challenge Jake, so I wonder if he just was a little too fast on that run for his own good and was just too taxed once he got to that dead ball. Peter Ellis on Ooh. the way in. Sub 16 minutes right now. It's, it's quick. He's trying to not just make a mark, make a statement with this first event that he is going to be your male to beat all weekend long. Keith Ellis, 20 chest to bar pull ups and 15 bar muscle ups separate him and the finish line. But right behind him, Maddie Sturr. She's got a hefty lead on what would have been Amy Kringle's time coming in. Maddie Sturr, right to the bar. She's not chalking up. Maddie Getting to work on those 20 oh. chest to bar. When you think about, and I'm going to put you in this category, the, the shorter range athletes where, <clears throat> hey, your squat depth is easier to reach. Your pull up reach is a little bit easier to get. You can cycle your reps just that a little bit quicker. Jamie Goodwin coming into the field now. But Pete Ellis. If you're talking about 35 reps, rookie, that you know that could be 35 seconds. Correct. Uh, or maybe sit, set, you know, half of that. Let's just even say 17 seconds. That's a lot of time that you can make up just by having shorter levers. Zach Thomas at the top of screen in the blue shirt, just strolling now those last few meters to get to. The pull-up bar. But look at this. Pete Ellis, less than five reps to go. Only 17, just over 17 minutes on the clock. Yeah, Pete Ellis now coming to the finish line. And 17.23. That is an electric time. Unbelievable. Again, he did not just make a mark. He left a statement for the rest of these gentlemen that he is the man to beat. And right behind him. Matty Sturt. Looking cool as a cucumber right yes. there too, rookie. The 2022 Down Under champion and setting the pace to beat for the ladies in event one. Jamie Goodwin is doing extremely well. I know you know how difficult it is to come back from childbirth and getting back into competition. This is incredible. Well, and it, it's proof that being in the top heat, being in the faster heat, drags you along as well. So, I mean, just look at the times that we're looking at with this heat. You know, when you're comparing yourself, when you're running against the best, you often perform the best. Jamie Goodwin. Great job for Jamie. Outstanding. Young Mateo is going to be pumped. Grace Walton finishing off. Now, Jamie beats one of the top five athletes, female athletes in the Oceania region in Grace Walton. That's impressive on its own. Oh, for sure. Emily DeRoy cycling through those chest bar pull-ups. Smarty Sykes in there as well. And again, it looks like none of these other ladies are going to come in uh, before Amy Kringle's time, time of 1852. So Amy Kringle will finish with a second place time which is not bad for her not bad that's outstanding <laughs> John O'Dunlop in lane number one gets done a great finish from him Zane Shelby Healy Zach Thomas on the bar a lot of really fast times in this heat Luke De Jong finishing up as well and Zane it's been two different types of athletes Athletes that have come over the line are feeling pretty fresh, mm -hmm. like your Amy Kringles and Maddie Sturtz. Yep. And some that just fall over the line in a very similar time frame. Yep. Well, and you have to wonder, what will that, what will their recovery look like? Dante finishing up, what will their recovery look like between now and the next event? Because just because sometimes these athletes look like that when they cross the line, doesn't mean that the fatigue will stay there as long as the recovery is good. Grace Walton finishing up sub 20. And those of you who don't recognize Luke De Jong, the Afro is gone. <laughs> Short back and sides now for Luke De Jong. Marnie Sykes. 
competitive time from her as well. We're at that 2011 time. Zach Thomas now will be our next athlete to finish off. <laughs> Training partners and also partners in Zane Shelby Healy so. and Grace Walton. <laughs> you can give sweaty hugs to whoever you want. That looked like more than a sweaty hug. Annika Greer still out there, chipping away at her chest bar pull-ups. Julia Hannaford now moving to the pull-up rig with just over four minutes left. Taylor Williamson. Luke Fowler as well. Taylor there in the black and the green as Emily DeRoy finishes up her event one. And I think, you know, Taylor Williamson will undoubtedly finish this event, but maybe not finish in the fashion that we had originally suspected. Jake Douglas. Hands on his head, walking up that last part. He is going to have to pick it up just a bit to make sure he finishes this event. Annika Greer almost done. Of course, Julia Hannaford also close to finished. Annika Greer just under the 22 minute mark. Great job for Annika, who's had a great year competing. Just about three minutes, Julia Hannaford chipping away at those bar muscle ups. See Taylor Taylor Williamson in the far right hand side of your screen onto her bar muscle ups. Julia resting at the top of those bar muscle ups, trying to catch her breath, not come off the bar. And the shape now really starting to creep over, so the athletes are pretty lucky in their recovery. And only two minutes until we finish off event number one for our elite males and females, Hannaford, with less than five. And Jake Douglas just getting to the pull-up bar. He has just about two minutes to finish all of this pull-up bar work. Oh, right into those bar muscle-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Not a girl, Taylor. <laughs> Send it at every opportunity. <laughs> well, <laughs> she was fanging it out there, wasn't she? She was fanging it, indeed. But again, that is a true competitor, right? She knows that every second counts, every place counts for points. And so if she has an opportunity to beat somebody for points, she's not going to not take it. Oh, of course. Talk, you talk about true competitors. You put Taylor Williamson in that mold immediately. Two-time games winner. Jake Douglas getting done. And you mentioned how tight things were with Thor Heinel and Johan Van Ziel. Two seconds, in fact. You look at the two physiques of both of them, and they're completely different. Right. Very different in both those athletes. But again, this event has a little bit of everything, a little bit of something for everyone. Some monostructural with the running, some gymnastics with the bar work, some weightlifting with the ball work. Nobody can say this wasn't for them. Oh, exactly right. And for all of our athletes in heat number three to get that finished a minute under the time cap, and Jake Douglas being that last athlete through, shows what a great test it was and how applicable that time cap was. Pete Ellis just choosing to run right through the surf, got up to that ball. He must have had five reps on the next athlete by the time they got there, but it was both Pete Ellis and Maddie Sturt, who were consistent on that dead ball, made up a bunch of time. And it looked like almost recovered on that dead ball, which I think was the true difference. Jamie Goodwin was impressive as well, keeping in touch with Maddie Sturt. Pete Ellis wasn't too phased, wasn't looking around, wasn't looking back. Focus on the job at hand. And not only does he want to get back on the podium for 2023, but he wants to stand on top.
just how Maddie Sturt wants to end an event on the pull-up bar. Maddie looking fresh as a daisy, last year's champ, coming in to be this year's champ as well. Exactly the way you want to start your competition and a great comeback for Jamie Goodwin to hit the competition floor once again. She knows this floor so well and been to the CrossFit Games many times as a team competitor and qualifying through Win Stadium. Speaking of teams, Rookie, Oh, they're not you too far away. Yeah. Oh, the, and I can't wait to see you know what, is, what is happening. Beautiful day still. Don't be fooled by what you see on your screens right now. We are obviously looking east over the ocean, but behind us, the dark clouds are mm. looming. <laughs> the doom is looming. <laughs> I like that. That's okay. This one, you have some friends to help you out with all this work, right? Sean Brickwood, talk about old school. The team, alumni 2015. We're getting on the floor soon, but let's head down to Bella Martin on the competition floor. Pete, you won this workout, I would say pretty easily. You were on top of the podium last year in third. What did you change this year so maybe you're on top? Um, I've just been attacking my weaknesses hard, like trying to really dial in on them. So rather than one first place, because I won a couple of events last year, I'm looking to win as many as possible this year, just be on top on all of them. So we'll see what we can do. I love that attitude and that perspective, and I would say you definitely did attack it. You had a lead in the beginning and you maintained it. What energy, what mentality were you going in that back half, getting up to the D-balls first, running back to the end? I just fucking want it. I want it so bad, like, I'll do whatever it takes. There's nothing stopping me this year. We've got another event coming up in a little bit. A lot of quads, a little bit of deadlifts. What are we feeling for it? Send it. You heard it here first. Send it, event one winner, Pete Ellis. Thanks, Bella. Thank you. I just saw some crazy eyes from Pete Ellis. Oh. Hey, let's talk about being focused and That's wanting to uh, do well in this event. Um, I'll be on top. He just wants to get after this oh. so badly. That's I exactly what he said. I want it so bad. I love it. You got to love that kind of passion. And if you're one of his competitors, you got to be scared of that kind of passion. As I mentioned, the alumni 2015 team of Josh Santhal, CJ Walker and Sean Brickwood <laughs> are three of the old schools. Best way to warm up, a little boogie. <laughs> oh, we can do that. Elites are done for the morning, event number one. We can put a tick in that box. Elite teams now. Men and women in the same heat, and they are going to be doing something a little bit different, which we'll get to in a sec. But just as grueling, if not more grueling. I was going to say, Rookie, if, <laughs> if we thought that 1K beach run looked bad, imagine doing it carrying a dead ball. That's what these teams are going to have to do. Thor Heinel finishing in 1909. Johan Van Ziel in 1907, but Pete Ellis. Absolutely fanging oh, it on that first one. Just demolishing event number one, Georgia Pryor. <laughs> finishing and then going, nope, I'm going to the shade. Amy Kringle, who set the time to beat in heat two, along with Thor Heil. Thor Heinel getting it done. Ethan Vandervelden emptying the tank. But it was Pete Ellis and Maddie Sturt in that final heat that took the win. Super impressive from both of those athletes. And they both looked fresh as a daisy. So let's move on now to the team competition. And this is event number one for the teams. Things have changed just a bit here. A little. Okay. They're going to do an 800 meter run, the three of them together. But get this, they have to carry a dead ball. That dead ball will be 50 kilos for the uh, ladies. Uh, sorry, and 70 kilos, no, 40 kilos for the ladies, 60 kilos for the gents. Uh, then they'll get up to the Lighthouse 60 dead ball cleans where they do have to swap every 10 reps. They'll run down back to the beach, pick up their lighter dead ball carry it back into Wynn Stadium where they have to perform 60 bar muscle-ups. At that point, they can share the reps however they want them. That iconic Wollongong Lighthouse. 
I'm actually glad for the teams that they're not actually carrying the dead ball weight cleans that they're ah. doing at the lighthouse. Ah. That'd be even more miserable. Exactly. <laughs> but this is where, you know, things can get awkward. Like we thought running in the sand was hard. With your boat being able to use both arms, now imagine only having one to use and then trying to awkwardly transfer it to a teammate when you fatigue. Underway for Heat, number one of the team competition. Not too many three-person, same-gender teams around the world. The only one, the other one that springs to mind is what a palooza. And all the athletes having to sprint out of the stadium together. It'll be interesting to watch the different strategies, both in time that they carry these balls, the way that they carry these dead balls, and how they exchange them to each other. I was talking to Emily Rethwell yesterday just in regards to how they tested this event, and we'll see the California girls come in a couple of heats' time. But they, she said that they tested this on concrete, and she said the transition was easy. I spoke to Jesse Smith as well, and she goes, this, this event for them is going to be a warm-up because it's so easy. And I went, that was on concrete. It, right. it wasn't on soft sand, so well, we'll I mean, see look, what happens. Look at these athletes. Very few of them are actually running, especially the ones that are holding those balls. At this point, it becomes a fast shuffle. Do you think strategy? Do you load up one of your strongest athletes that can maintain the weight of the ball for a long distance, even though the run may not be 100%, that fast? 100%. Save your other two for the yep. top, and all you're pretty much doing is getting a Clydesdale horse and yep. loading them up and trucking them down the beach. 100%. If there is somebody that is just markedly you know, better at carrying that dead ball, they have to take one for the team. They've got to carry it for a longer distance. Again, for some of these athletes, just a plain run without a dead ball is going to be t so tough in the sand. Some of these athletes, that dead ball is probably almost their body weight. I'm not sure if you can see the transition from some of the teams, but they were shoulder to shoulder, and it was just a simple roll off, and team member just takes straight over. Yep. So that's easy. I think the way back will get a little bit more difficult. You think? Oh, and now the first ball we've seen drop on the sand and not ideal to having to clean that back up to the shoulder. Nope. And while these, D ball, these dead balls are lighter than the ones at the lighthouse, they're also bigger. They're really thick. So it's not something you can easily shoulder. You can see a lot of these athletes having to use two hands. And there's people just having a nice day out at the beach, just sitting there, probably scratching their head. We've seen these other athletes run up and down with right. no ball. Now these guys have got a ball. Couldn't they just build sandcastles instead? Why do they have to run around with <laughs> carrying heavy <laughs> objects? Well, don't make things too easy for them. About a third of the way down their run already. There's not too many people in the surf either, and we know exactly. Yep. How rough that surf is. And the jog, slow jog has now oh. sort of slowed down to a, a walk, a shuffle across the beach. Yep, you can see some of these teams just really just kind of walking. For the individual athletes, for some of our top top athletes, this 1K run was, you know, maybe about five minutes. These athletes are only about halfway through the run, and they're already four minutes in, so it's showing just how tough adding this dead ball is into the run. Mm. So they do drop that ball, it looks like, a little bit before the lighthouse. Correct. That was Rob Forte's testing that he did, intensive testing, and found out 
that carrying that ball up the stairs was going to be a little bit too unsafe. <laughs> and they've probably done enough work at this stage. So they're going to dump that ball. Got and then they're going to 200 jog. meters more. 200 without. meters more. Then we're going to go up the stairs and then we'll get back to work once again. And important to remember, once they get up to that lighthouse, they do have to sh switch athletes every 10 reps on that dead ball. So 20 dead ball cleans per athlete. <laughs> this is where if you have a better runner, they can get ahead. What I'm not sure of, Rookie, is do all of your teammates have to be at the ball for you to start the cleans? Do you know? or Well, they have to just cycle them through every 10 reps. But so I mean, can, if so you if, can send an athlete through to start, but you can't move on until your second right. athlete's there after the first 10. So right. if you get a 10 rep lead, we'll, we'll definitely uh, strategize that yep. to make sure they can get a little bit of a lead, especially when the fatigue levels for the elite individuals has been so great once yep. they've got to the ball. If I was any of these athletes, I would be watching that TV screen all day long. The alumni, 2015, one of the first teams up the stairs, CJ Walker, surprisingly leading Sean Brickwood and Joshy Santow. One, two, nine, James Keane, Nick Ruxic, and James Vermin. Here's some people cheering in the background there. And they're lined up right along the railing where the athletes come up off the beach and start hitting the path, which is probably a very welcome relief, hitting solid ground for just a little while to yep. loop around. EXF gals coming up. Tasha Dalgleish, Tempany Hunt, Tanea Yorston, Tempany and Tanea having that experience at the Torian Pro this year in the EXF team. I love that there's uh, fans, spectators. At the <laughs> Running rail. with we, them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we asked, we, we talked about this yesterday. Do you think anybody will be up at the lighthouse? Uh, and I love that there are some people up there. You know, there's nothing like not, not feeling great, feeling fatigued. You're climbing up a set of stairs. As soon as you hear somebody say, let's go, rookie, or, you know, call on your name, it's amazing how much pep in your step that'll give you. Injection of yep. adrenaline. Yep. Oh, empty out those shoes. CJ Walker in the white shirt closest to the camera. And three athletes, obviously, that were around here on the competition floor in 2015 as individuals. Mm. <laughs> Matt Riley, Pete Ellis's coach, just walking past ah. us and a big smile on his face, and rightly so. 100 points in his pocket right now. Oh, somebody's got a phone. Maybe it's a <laughs> bring your own music. Put that on the speaker and, the <laughs> and, let, and let's get to work. Yep. Now that they have this whole thing on the gram right now. And in the maroon shirts, just behind the alumni in the white shirts, James Keane, Nick Lutzic, and Jack Vernon. And the girls now getting to work. Those clouds can hold off just a little bit longer. None of these athletes will have to deal with those wet dead balls. Adds a whole nother element to this piece of the. Time cap of 25 minutes for these teams to get the 800 meter dead ball run. And then the clean, 60 cleans required, 10 
alternating between each of the team members twice. Yep. And 10's a number that's pretty achievable Ooh. to get through and get through fast because your work to rest ratio is one yep. to three. So yep. whatever you're working, you're going to get roughly double amount of rest. Yep. But we even just saw one of the ladies fail one of those cleans. So even though it's only 10, I mean, we saw even with the elites, it, it's not easy. Well, 70 kilos and 50 kilos for the guys and girls. That's 155. And 110 pounds for those watching from the US. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for thank joining. You. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Yeah. More so. And a lot of great competitions coming up in the off season. Down under championship, one of those. I was talking to some people in the hotel lobby and you know they were just talking about how how much they love the down under championship because you know they were saying they don't have the games. It's much harder for spectators and fans of CrossFit to get over to America for the games. So things like the Torian and, and the Down Under Championship, this is their games. This is their chance to root for their favorite athletes, their favorite teams. And that is why you see so many fans come out for this event. And after the weather we've had in the previous oh. four days, it has oh. been... If you look on screen now, it hasn't been like this for the last four days. It has been torrential rain, thunderstorms. Wednesday night, it was <laughs> lightning, thunder. <laughs> How many of our athletes uh, and spectators that were coming in to Sydney that night couldn't get in? Well, there was over 100 cancelled flights oh. on the east coast of Australia on that day. So athletes, volunteers, all of the people coming yep. in for the Down Under struggling to get here. Yep. Even the equipment struggled to get here because of the weather. So... But you know what happened? The fitness gods decided oh, to decided. smile down on us <laughs> Didn't and what? give us some sunshine on day one of the Down Under Championships. We couldn't thank them more. All of our teams getting to work with the 60 cleans. When you think about comparison to what the individuals did, 25 at the same weight. Right, so again, this is really only five reps less, but like you were saying, Rookie, the, the pace at which a lot of these athletes are going to do those cleans is a lot faster because they know that they have to, they have to get it done so their partners can get to the, the ball. And a sprint effort like that can be really taxing, especially when you're going, coming out of or going into a run on the beach carrying another dead ball. 129 heading back now to the stairs to drop down and we hit the halfway point. This is event number one for our team competition with a 25 minute time cap. Get to the point and then get away from the point. It starts with an 800 meter dead ball carry between the teams of three. 60 dead ball cleans once they get up to the lighthouse where they have to swap every 10 reps. And then another 800 meter dead ball carry back into Wynn Stadium where they can do 60 bar muscle-ups split up between them however they would like. 25-minute time cap, and we are just over halfway through that right now. One team, Team 129, back on that run. One, two, nine... I don't, know what's, I don't know what's more daunting. They get down on the sand and they've got a little bit of reprieve. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> they look up and they go, oh, we forgot the ball again. Yep. <laughs> yep. But you just have to appreciate those 200 meters yeah. when you don't have the ball. Joshy Santow. Now, Joshy's working really hard. He's part of the Wadlife crew here mm -hmm. at the retail oh, store. So when he's not competing, he's over there. Stop help, it. Help it. No, I'm not, I'm not joking. And his beautiful little daughter came up to us at dinner last time. Oh, time. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm in love with her. <laughs> she came out for a chat. Well, if he needs me to babysit while he's working hard, <laughs> I'm happy to do it. She is too cute. And plenty All of chalk right. on those shoulders. Yep. 
another one of our great sponsors for the Down Under Championship 2023 at mm. the Wildlife. A big thank you to Andy and Ben. Speaking of, I have that shirt. I love that <laughs> shirt. I can't wait to wear it. They outfitted everybody here, all the broadcast. Look at these fans cheering them on, running with them. And you can hear the shuffle of the mm -hmm. feet. The breathing, the shuffling. But you can also hear the waves lapping. I mean, life could be worse, right, Rookie? Yes, oh. you have to carry a dead ball, but you're doing it down the beach, in the sun, with ideally two of your best mates. There's worse things you could be doing on a Friday afternoon. Oh, big time. With that as your backdrop, Wollongong. The mountains. Clouds. Absolutely gorgeous. One of our first female teams, CrossFit Karuna, on their way back. <laughs> Let's go. I was talking to Tommy Marquez the other day, and he was very, very happy with one of our teams in this heat in particular called Flat White Froth Fit. Oh, oh, they're speaking my language. I told everybody here that I could not wait to get back, not only for the Down Under Championship, but for the Flat Whites here. They are my absolute favorite. I have been dreaming about the Flat Whites for a year. So I'm with Tommy. Flat white froth fit, I'm all about it. <laughs> Sun's out, gun's out. Might as well get a tan while you're getting fit. Time to take those shirts off. So a little bit of rain expected in the next couple of hours. So all of our heats for our individuals and teams, they're gonna be well clear of any rain that's gonna disrupt. Carrying, could you imagine carrying that dead ball? Oh. In the rain. In the dead rain. That's it. As one, two, nine. Your leaders in heat number one. And the legs now. This is where they start to get a little bit heavy. And transitions, obviously, way more important. There's going to be a lot more of them. Right. I was just going to say, I mean, it will really benefit you to, to have a safe, clean way of handing off that ball. Because if you can keep everybody moving by transitioning that ball, switching it more often, I think it's a really good idea. Don't forget, once they get back, they have to split up 60 bar muscle ups. And they're working against a 25 minute clock, which means they only have about seven minutes to get back into Wynn Stadium and start knocking away at those 60 bar muscle ups. The 129 team of James Keane, Nick Luxich, and Jack Vernon. And the legs. Star Strength Silver heading back down from the lighthouse. And it's like, what point in time do you let your mate suffer too much before grabbing right. the ball in transition? Yep. What's that point where your teammate's going to actually fatigue and drop the ball? So you've got to try and. It's like a, a bat and relay when you go into 4 by 100 What's the point where you get there and you've actually take the ball off your mate and say, hey, I got you? Well, I, I, that's why I think it's so important to have really good communication between teammates. Uh, I've only done a couple of team things, but, you know, you have to make sure not only that you're communicating well, but you're communicating where you're at. If you need a break, you have got to let your teammates know because what you don't want to do is be a hero for your team and then end up getting into here into the wind stadium and not being able to do any bar muscle ups so you're better off to communicate often and honestly oh you can see what carrying that ball does but the team other team members walking alongside they're not even jogging anymore because there's, nope. there's no point there's no point Almost at 20 minutes, some of these teams that are just starting. I wonder what the uh, the strategy is once 
once if these teams are time capped with their balls still out on the course hey they're going to bring him back anyway it, <laughs> so will they have the teams bring him back they well, don't, they don't I, have a, i don't know do you and I have to go get No, him? we do not. <laughs> Star strength, silver, bottom of the screen, coming back with Lauren Fitzgerald, Sarah Derrick, Taylor Baker. But one, the two, one nine. to nine, they have just sat in the pocket of the 2015 alumni for that first run, got their clean sorted and straight back out. Yep. And they have done extremely well. Here they come. Almost to solid ground again, where they can dump that dead ball. The job is far from done. Oh, the yeah. athletes here have only got four and a half four minutes and a, yep. to get 60 bar muscle-ups done. Keep in mind, Rob Forte and James Newbury, I'm not sure who the third partner was, in fact, but they finished in 23.20 yesterday afternoon. So that's close. So that is coming up very, very quickly. Yep. Look at that. These athletes can see Wind Stadium. <laughs> so close they can yet. See so the far. wind saw, yeah. <laughs> it's like an oasis. This is the point where you just have to hop up and start chipping away. Oh, the legs, they're starting to cramp. Yep. Those calves would have been working. I just saw Ricky Garrard a couple of minutes ago in our break we had between individuals and teams, and he is raring to go. And I said, how's it going now, you being the mentor rather than like, right. the person who's listening? You actually got to guide these young guys, Joel Millennia and Johan Roberts. And he goes, I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. <laughs> oh. I feel <laughs> bad. Oh, there you go. Brace, I mean, that was brace your partner. Perfect. Yes. That's Here how you act like a team. The 2015 alumni, Joshi Santhal, will get to pull up our first. And there's one thing you can't beat, and that's experience. And the guys from the alumni 2015 have a lot of that. Yep. You get these younger athletes coming onto the competition floor at Wind Stadium for the first time. Sometimes they get overawed a little bit with what's happening. But the alumni have got so much experience individually and in teams. That matters so much, Rookie. Especially when you're talking about, you know, a three-day event. Multiple, multiple tests that these athletes are going to have to go through. It's not just how well can you do on this first one, but how well can you do across all of the tests that these are going to be put up against. And that's where experience, you know, knowing how to get out of the sun right after the event, how to get refueled properly, how to stay off your phone. All these things matter so much across a whole weekend. So you think about 60 bar muscle ups at the back end of this event. We've got about um, just over 90 seconds left now. They don't have to do a set amount. Right. They've just got to split the 60 reps up within their team. What sort of strategy do you do going into this with all of that fatigue on board? You know, I think you can take your set pretty deep, obviously not to failure, uh, but you can take your set pretty deep because you know that you have a good amount of rest. Like you were saying on those, the, those dead balls, it could be a one to three ratio, assuming you're all about the same uh, proficiency on those bar muscle ups. So, you can take it fairly deep without going to failure. Is, is 10 too many? No. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Heard it here first. Not for me, <laughs> is it? It might be for you. <laughs> no, I think for these athletes, 10 is probably a really good idea. 129 in the red shirts, just to the left of screen now. Your leaders just in front in the white shirts, the alumni 2015 in second place. Unless you're super efficient at your transition, you, know, you lose time every time you transition on and off that bar. So if you can hold something like sets of 10, I think it's really smart. The less transitions you have to make, 
the better off you are. And the boys from 129, James Keane, Nick Luxic, and Jack Vermin. Just in time. Oh, we're talking about cutting it fine. Mm -hmm. Anything about experience? Experience can't be substituted for speed either. So 129 are going to be our only team to get this one finished. And it is a valid test. We've had a team finish. We actually had two, to include Rob Forte's team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the individual one was grueling. This is way worse. Oh, you can tell just by how many teams did not make it in before that time cap. And unfortunately, all these teams are not going to get credit for this work that they're doing. But they probably but don't they even know the time caps here. Oh, no. They're going to get a rude shock when they come in the stadium. Uh-huh. You know what I think I did see, Rookie, is there's extra balls at the top. So I think in the event that some of these teams haven't gotten their ball back before the next heat starts, there's already extra balls up there. Forward planning. But heat number Somebody's one. thinking with their noodle. They are. It's good to see. <laughs> heat one in the books for our men and women for our elite team division. What a great start to day one of competition, the Down Under Championship 2023. Sun is shining, the seagulls are squawking. And the boys of 129 are celebrating. <laughs> oh, they what? The only team in that heat to finish that event. They weren't the first team to the ball, but they were very efficient on that run. They were able to pass it off smoothly. Again, coming into the dead ball cleans about third, but that's definitely where they made their made their mark. They made the run. They were the first team off the dead ball cleans, and from there it was no looking back. All these athletes having to do 20 reps of dead ball cleans, but it was the boys of 129 that were able to get through them and get that ball back down the beach and their bodies back into Wynn Stadium to get 60 bar muscle-ups and a heat win. We spoke about efficiency, strategy, all that comes into play, especially when the wheels fall off. And we took a 25-minute events. That's a long time to be strategizing and trying to keep things in, in track. Well, again, I was so good. Yep, and again, I think it really comes down to communication. So, unless you have done an event like that, which I'm, I'm assuming most of these teams have not, you have to make sure you're communicating with your teammates. Moving on now to heat number two of event number one, and a familiar gym name in lane number four, Schwartz's CrossFit Melbourne. So Going to the CrossFit game so many times. Yep. Benji down there in Melbourne. Don't be fooled, there are a number of teams here who could really shake that 25 minute time cap. Let's see if anybody can do it. Get to the point for the elite teams. It's their first event and it starts with an 800 meter dead ball carry. Once they get to the lighthouse, they'll do 60 dead ball clean swapping every 10 reps. And then back they come with an 800 meter dead ball carry and 60 bar muscle ups to finish off all against a 25 minute time cap. Can anybody in this heat do what the boys of 129 did and finish under that 25 minute time cap? Cutting it very fine in the last 10 seconds of the time cap. Now they'll have a split time to work with. What time they need to be leaving the lighthouse in order to get back in time. And thank you for your company. Jeremy Austin with you. And he's Sakamoto all the way from Santa Cruz in California. And joining us a bit later on up at the lighthouse for this event will be Texan Bella Martin. Texan by way of DC and San Diego. On the way to San Diego, yeah, on yes. On the way to San Diego. <laughs> Although she's never lived there, she lives there. Ten seconds. Stand by. 
Brody Scott, far right of screen. Freezing hot CrossFit. Work that one out. Freezing hot CrossFit. <laughs> I like it. Well, it's freezing in the water here. It's about 18 degrees Celsius, oh. and it is boiling hot. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's hot is the pace the, the, going out of the... <laughs> the speed of these athletes in heat too. They've just realised that time cap is coming quick yeah. and they need to bust chops up that beach as quick as they can. And in comparison, I, we look at the individuals and they're doing some gymnastic work first and then they're out the door. These teams, they're going guns blazing. Oh, they, yeah, but this, this event for these teams looks 10 times worse than the individual event. I cannot believe how brutal this D-ball 800 meter run looks. Ayuki's strength, very quick to get out. Billy Gray, Jordan Wilson, Tyrone Hurst. They were very, very fast getting out of the stadium, yep. but not just to get out of the stadium, but get their ball and get on the sand as quickly as possible. Right. Well, so if you're smart, you're gonna get that ball closest to the water Every step counts that you don't have to be carrying that ball. We haven't seen one go in the drink just yet. Just yet. But there's still time. Exactly. And look how close they are. Yeah. You mentioned it. They're getting as close as they can to the water. And you can even just see under their, you know, their feet aren't sinking into that sand, which means they're able to keep a little bit better cadence than the heat before. It's funny to see too, Rookie, how the heat before, everybody kind of stayed up high. It's like once one or two teams do it, nobody thinks to change it. This heat, first couple teams went right down to the water's edge, and now everybody's following suit. Isn't it funny? Monkey see, monkey do. Yep. I think they just possibly assume that that's the right thing to do. Right. And sometimes... Whether it is or not. Sometimes you can come unstuck. And talk about following in your own path. A lot of athletes just go blinkers on. Let's follow what the other team's doing because yep. they're in front of us. They're obviously doing the right thing. Well, and so, it, you know, it makes you wonder, did any, did any of these teams practice this? Did they at least practice running together as a team on the sand? Did they, did they come down and see if it was better to run closer to the water's edge? Or is it a little bit easier up a little bit higher on the beach? Now, they're meandering a fair way up and down this beach now, trying to avoid the water coming in, so they're actually covering more distance. Exactly. They went up a little bit further, negate that. Exactly, and that's, you know, that's where you need to practice that, because if you're constantly dodging the water, the, the waves coming up to your feet, like you said, you're expending more energy just trying to stay away from the water and not get your feet wet. A lot of the athletes choosing exactly the same position to carry that D-ball, and that is on the shoulder. By doing that, obviously your head's in a pretty ordinary position, and your core is working over time. Yep, and unless you make sure that you switch, you know, if you're always carrying on one side, you always have that other arm out to balance, you can have a long weekend. <laughs> you oh. kink that neck early on, it's not going to be comfortable. Our first team from Star Strength going into the soft sand. A little bit of cloud cover now. You can mm -hmm. see the cloud move over and things getting a little dark. bit dark. <laughs> We've got a heat and a half to go. Can you please hold out for a little bit? Oh, these gents are carrying a little bit of water. Not a bad idea. You know where I'd love to be right now, Jeremy? <laughs> See that guy right in the water, right in the shoreline? I think he's got a surfboard, actually. Great place to surf, except for if it was Wednesday this week. Oh, that was, that was like being in a washing machine. Star strength. Hawkesbury's finest. Tommy Galea, Donnie Henkel, and Steve Norman. Cameraman's not even going to move for him. You nope. run around yeah. me. <laughs> I'm I was, not walking I, around I in was the here sand. For, I was here first. <laughs> <laughs> but they're going to be your first team. Tommy leading the charge in those white sunglasses. Oh, they feel so good not oh. having to carry that ball right now. But he's moving pretty yeah. well. It's because he doesn't have a 60 kilo <laughs> D ball on his shoulder.
and athletes now moving their way up the stairwell they'll hang a right and go down the path and then loop around the fountain that's in front of the lighthouse you hear that surf consistently in the background Greater West in the maroon shirts with Tim James Portelli, Tim Good, and Nathan the Meatball Horner. <laughs> Abby Ashton coming up. It's a lot of familiar names moving into team competition this year. And the work is so far from done, oh, they don't even realise it. It's barely just begun. So now these athletes are going to do 60 dead ball cleans and they have to rotate every 10. Now, are they at a advantage or disadvantage with that sun going behind the clouds? Oh, definite advantage. If that sun's not blaring down right on you. Lachlan Park from the Star Strength of Gold getting to the dead ball for his team first. He can get to work on his 10. Coming to Leah, closest to the screen. Brody Scott the far end. He's his first athlete. And as hard as it is, as much as you can, you got to dump that ball, turn around, and pick it right back up. Only about seven minutes into this event. You actually had to use your brain a little bit on this event too. You had to remember your lane number because each team <laughs> returns to their yeah. Sonia Mori just asking her judge Four? right then. Four? <laughs> no, no, sixty. <laughs> sixty is your number, not four. Sonia Mori, one of those athletes with lots of experience as well. And while the ladies and gents from Heat number two get to work on their dead balls, let's head back to the lighthouse with Bella Martin. Guys, it is a lot of the same story we saw in the individuals. But now there's a couple more people with their hands on their knees trying to catch their breath as they get up here on the lighthouse and on to the D-ball cleans. Most of the female teams are starting to join the party for the men, but the men are cranking away on these cleans. Well, it looks like the pace for these athletes has to be a lot faster considering you're, you're holding up the rest of your team if you're not fast. It, does it look like... You know, pace-wise, they're moving through these D-ball cleans quicker than the individuals did. You know, I don't want to be too cheeky, but they did have 200 <laughs> meters less to run. They did have an 800-meter <laughs> run, but they also had to carry that D-ball along the sand. I want to give them the credit, though. They are moving a bit quicker, but they do know they get a little bit of rest since they can split the work between them. So there's definitely going to be some strategy going into play. Who's going first, who's going last, and what pace we're going to see heading back out onto the run. Bella, those clouds still looming in the background. We look like we're going to pretty much get clear of that. Has the temperature risen or dropped at all since you've been out there at the lighthouse? I'll tell you what, I am sweaty mess now that the sun is beating <laughs> down on us up here at the lighthouse. We saw a little bit of rain, so the humidity is also a factor. These athletes are really going to have to test their limits today. Hydration, staying in shade, and also just recovery. It's all going to come into play tonight. Excellent. And I don't know if you know, Bella, only one of the teams in the previous heat finished. Does it look like these teams that are out there now know that? Do you do you feel any more pressure or any more, um, you know, sense of, of pressure from some of these teams, knowing that only one team finished before in the heat before? 
You know, it's pretty quiet out here. All I can hear is the sound of them breathing and the D-balls hitting that ground hard. But if we're going off of those two things, I think they're ready for some finishing times. Excellent. Getting to work for our second heat of three, our final heat to come for our elite teams for the males and females. And not just the work here, once you leave here, the grind the athletes have to go through to get back down the stairs and onto the sand. You've got to obviously enjoy the time you leave the D-ball here to the time you pick it back up again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think most of these athletes are going to have D-ball nightmares for a little while. Between these cleans and that carry down the beach. The team I mentioned earlier on, Schwartz's CrossFit Melbourne. Nicola Cummins, Poppy Hay and Sonia Mori. One of our first teams of three for the ladies. Sonia getting to work. She's four athletes in from the bottom of screen. And moving the D-ball quite easily. Sonia not a very tall athlete, but that's really, really simple. And our first teams are heading back. And it is Greater West who are just ahead of star strength. Hawkesbury's finest. Looks like maroon is the shirt color to oh, wear. I'll tell you what. 129 one, had on maroon shirts. That might be the shirt color <laughs> for this event. Tight race as they head from the lighthouse down the stairs. Pretty much mm, level pegging yeah. for. <laughs> We're one for one for every teammate right now. Galea out in front, four-star strength, Hawkesbury's finest. And we're heading back and we're just about at the halfway points of heat number two for event number one. And just what is a brutal opening event for these teams. Combination of running, gymnastics, weightlifting. You mentioned grueling. Give me an outdoor event any day of the week over sitting in a confined space in your gym. You're always in your gym. Get outside your gym. Get outside and do outdoor activities. Well, and as hard as it is to run on the sand, like you're saying, to, to be looking at the ocean, to be smelling the ocean versus running on an air runner inside a small claustrophobic gym I'm with you rookie take me outside any day how often do you get to do fitness with your friends at a lighthouse <laughs> never right you have to look at the positives the last few untethered meters for these two male teams before they have to pick up that ball Come on, Jay. And go the next 800 meters with that 60 kilo dead ball. Nicola Cummins there looks like she is fairly fatigued from Schwartz's <laughs> CrossFit Melbourne. It's funny how people's, you talk about their cadence, it just it breaks down once you add a little bit of fatigue, not just in your posterior chain, obviously, from lifting that D ball, but also your core. Yep your midline, even your shoulders. You know, you think about how much your arms help you, help to propel, propel you when you run. Your arms are fatigued from, you know, cleaning the D-ball. Everything is fatigued. And now you have to go run through quicksand. Once again, all of these teams choosing that lower route, hugging that shoreline a little bit tighter than the first heat. Laura Roberts from the Urban Gals. It looks like they're moving a little quicker than... It feels that way. Yeah, let's than not, the earlier heat. Let's not be fooled. A lot of the teams haven't picked up their D-ball yet. Yep. But the Urban Girls of Jade Henderson and Talia Manyweather as well. 
They are just about to hit the sand for the first time. And sweat is probably something we haven't really spoken about and how that affects what they're doing. You don't see many athletes with their shirts off currently because there's every chance of sweat with your skin is going to make that ball extremely slippery. And there could be chafing from that ball. Those are rubber balls, and what you don't want to do is end up with a bunch of abrasions or things that might bother you throughout the weekend. So, yeah, really good that a lot of these athletes are just keeping their shirt on for this part of the event. You want to rip it off when you get in the stadium and start in on those 20, or sorry, 60 bar muscle-ups? Makes sense. Right now, when you're carrying that awkward D-ball, you got to keep that shirt on. Less than 10 minutes and star strength. Hawkesbury's finest. Your leaders, and they're they, looking a they, lot more comfortable than Heat 1. They're making great time on this second run back. I mean, look at, they're actually still kind of running. <laughs> the Frog Force girls head down the stairs as well. Ebony Jankowski, Georgia Otto, and Talia Jordan. Smooth on the transition, star strength. Hawksbury finest. There's one of those dark clouds. And you know those athletes are thankful for it. <laughs> a little bit. A little reprieve. Oh, just a little. And Greater West, just in the back, Nathan Horner. Another one of those athletes with plenty of experience here on competition floor. Well, Greater West is doing a great job oh. of staying on Star Strength's heels for this final run here. Now that water bottle. Important. Steve Norman now has moved this ball when he's had it extremely well and this is a lot faster coming back into yep. this ward life arena here at wind stadium still a good amount of time they're going to have probably close to seven minutes on the clock to get through those 60 bar muscle ups right behind star strength hawksbury's finest is Greater West HQ, not far behind them. Frog Force in the white and red. The athletes. Come back in mm. and strategy of who goes where. Important to an extent considering you don't have to do a limited amount right. or you don't have to split them evenly you can just get straight to work looks like these gentlemen have a, an order though they've certainly been talking about it yep and with just under seven minutes to go star strength hawksbury's finest starts in on their 60 bar muscle ups Hot on their heels is Greater West HQ. And the requirements of the athletes not to get those feet higher than the bar, really important. Two and a half men in the white shirts coming to left of screen now. Kobe Heaney, Max Lees, and Thomas Woodham. Missile Phillip. Relatively easy. Oh, they look beautiful. Ooh, one of our first female teams coming back in. We could have a good five minutes left on that clock for the 60 bar muscle ups. As you mentioned earlier, one team finishing so far 
as we hit very close to that 20 minute mark. So five minutes for 60 bar muscle ups yep. is nothing to sneeze at either. No. Nope. As long as these teams keep it quick and fast on those reps, they could definitely, they definitely have enough time on the clock to finish all 60. And it is peak 129 alley with Caitlin Denny, Abby Ashton, and Shelby Fennick. No confusion. about Caitlin this time around with her twin sister sitting in the crowd, I tell you. I've, <laughs> Don't I've got, mess that one up. I've got that nail this time. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be on the floor competing? Look at her messing with you. Looks like a lot more teams are going to be back in Wynn Stadium before that time cap this time. And it is, in fact, Schwartz's CrossFit Melbourne, Poppy Hay waiting at the top. Oh, what a big kip that wow. is. Wow. Doesn't he, hang out at the top. He's just right back down for that next rep. Well, you think the higher the pull, the easier the extension for those triceps. Right. The higher the pull, you less, the less you push, right? But it can be so much more taxing on the breath. You don't get that little moment on your belly to rest and breathe. But right now it's go time. You gotta pull yourself back down for that next rep. And our first team over the line will be Greater West HQ. Star Strength Hawkesbury's finest. With just over three minutes to go now, and there are almost every team lined up in their lanes getting through these 60 bar muscle ups throw it back to when we were here for regional level if you would have said 60 bar muscle up as a team it would have been whoa that's way too much work right Pro now this is how you're finishing a workout <laughs> progression and, and probably two and a half men and probably all of these teams or most of these teams are doing it where every athlete is doing a set of 10 reps Two and a half minutes remain now. And is a battle now against the clock. And Brody Scott's team from Star Strength Gold coming in. They were so fast on those bar muscles. Oh, Great job from Star lightning. Strength Gold. Luke Star. His little stable he's got running at the moment. He has got so many great athletes under his tutelage. Darren Shaw assisting as well. Lethia Boone part of that. Mm. We'll see Alethea coming no up more. next. That's some oh, royalty. Oh, we're talking about someone who's good at bar muscle up. Hold on to your hats. Frothing at the bit to get oh, back in here. Exactly. Schwartz is onto the right of screen. Got to be getting close. One, two, nine, peak alley. Seconds. Here we go. It is oh. the girls on peak one, two, nine, alley. Great work from those one, ladies. Two, oh, they have made up a whole lot of time. There's a frog force move to the bar now in the white and red. First female team to <laughs> Caitlin, finish. Caitlin, what was our time? <laughs> Under the time cap, yeah, so it's so exactly. it's good. <laughs> oh, two ladies teams. And they're all finishing now. Getting faster and faster. Sheree Myers. Vincy Woodhouse. Team GMC with Georgia's ball. Doing very well. And with less than 30 seconds, the Schwartz's CrossFit Melbourne ladies are getting finished up. Now we have 10 seconds to work. The 
last couple of seconds. Urban Girls, Talia Manyweather on the left-hand side. Talia Jordan on the right in the white and red. And heat number two finally finishes. And a lot more teams getting that job done. Yep, very impressive. I think every team made it back into the stadium, which is huge compared to that first heat of athletes. And I think part of it was how fast this heat too took off for those D-balls. The other thing that we noticed that was different rookie and the way that these teams handled it was they ran closer to the ocean's edge. And it was star strength, Hawkeye, Hawkbury, excuse me, Hawksbury's finest that were one of the first teams up to the D-balls. And then of course the ladies from peak 129 alley holding a really good pace all the way up to the lighthouse. Hawksbury's finest, one of the first teams off. They were neck and neck with Greater West HQ back to the balls. They were the first ones back into Wynn Stadium, but Greater West kept that gap close. And of course the ladies from peak 129 alley, they did themselves some good by pushing hard all the way through this event. Finishing all 60 bar muscle ups well under the time cap. First female team to finish. Star strength gold. Super fast on those bar muscle ups. And many of the teams in Heat 2 made it over the line. Can all of the teams from Heat 3 make it over? We're about to find out. Oh, talk about royalty. Amy Alessi, 10 years competing down here in Wollongong. That's a long time. Starting in 2013 regionals when we got down here. And she's been here for a long time. And once again, a big thank you to our sponsors, Reebok, for their support of Down Under 2023. I remember when I was in the teenage division, just missing out on the games and uh, yeah, getting a taste for it, that this is something that I wanted to do for real. Down under this year, I want to add to the trophy cabinet of not only an individual first place, but a team first place as well. My goal for this season is to win the CrossFit Games. I feel like I've never been able to like confidently say that. This season, that's the goal. I first got introduced to CrossFit through my dad who brought me along. He just thought it would be a good idea to improve my fitness and strength for the other sports I was doing at the time. <laughs> Winning my first nationals event last year, I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't ex really expect anything for myself. So winning an event was really cool. I just want to prove that I belong, but if I do what I've been doing, I reckon that will happen pretty nicely. So. Just trying to be as disciplined as I can, be involved with the community, because that's what makes it as special as it is. Gabby Napa, one of the youngsters in the Oceania region who is going to make a splash in the future years, snatching 100 kilos last week in New Zealand Nationals, 225 as a 17 year old. She's got a massive future and the Prince of the Pacific, Jay Crouch. How many more trophies do you want to put in your cabinet? He can go put them in his sauna that he's got at his gym at home. <laughs> a true competitor never has enough, Rebecca. <laughs> Correct. And here we are for heat number three, 80 Karnowitz. The pink hair does it for me. You like that? Well, she's a weightlifting coach at my gym back home ah. on the Gold Coast. So I see her quite regularly, like every day. Uh, and she's got a lot of experience as well. And some big names, you mentioned the California girls on the floor. The Fit Mamas. The Fit Mamas, I am hanging. But the Ombre Hombres and Team Frog Grips, two of the teams we earmarked at the top of the show. Costa Illich with his team from Dignus Atletica, another Western Australian team. We've got so many representatives from Western Australia. It is great to see. I don't know what they're doing over there, but they're doing something right. Something in the water on that West Coast. <laughs> I'm a West Coast girl. I like that. That's it. 
We've got plenty of great whites as well. Standing by for the start. And we get underway. And <laughs> as we saw in Heat 2. It's a full-out sprint. A sprint is on. Noah Olsen out in front. Bailey Martin out there. Ricky Garrard out there as well. And being Ricky Garrard's backyard, you could say. He's probably, Home, hometown crowd. He's probably been done a lot of training sessions for rugby league here on this field. And Noah, the first person to the D ball and off running. Very quick, Bailey Martin in second and Ricky Garrard in third. Those boys are all saying, just keep up, huh? The Fit Mummers, the first female team to rock as well. And getting very, very cluttered. And we talk about position ball on the shoulder, and I don't think anything's changed in the last two heats. No, I think, you know, it really comes down to are you going to use two hands to hold it on your shoulder on the side there or kind of towards the back like we see right there in the front, or are you going to hold just one hand on that ball and then, you know, we've seen some athletes use that other hand up to the side to balance themselves. You mentioned the California girls as well. Jesse Smith, Emily Rethwell, and Danny Spiegel. I spoke to Jesse after dinner last night and she said for them, when they practice this on the concrete, she goes, it was like a warm up. And I went, okay. Like, and like I, a warm up. And I went, so I've seen, she goes, we're not sure. <laughs> now, compared to that, uh, Noah, Tola, and Chandler did practice it, and they practiced how they were going to hand that ball off on the sand. And I think that was a good move because it's so different. Well, you didn't see Tola or Chandler, did you? Noah's out in front. Maybe they're just going to leave him to do the whole thing. <laughs> that's <laughs> well, another strategy. Great, that's a great strategy. Yeah, that's ne my kind of strategy. Never leave your wingman. That's the strategy. Right. <laughs> And the water coming in yep. faster and faster and athletes choosing to run through it. We saw some meandering earlier on. It's business now. We are straight to work. You just hope, you know, you don't end up getting too much sand and water in your shoes and blisters because that's something that will follow you the rest of the weekend. Look at the pace. Some of these athletes are still running with that ball. Well, the Ombre Hombre is out in front. Team Frog Grips just behind. And Ricky Garrard's team. Ricky Garrard has a couple of youngsters on his yes. team. And what they lack in knowledge, they can make up for in lack of pain. <laughs> Recovery. The hombre hombres looking pretty good right now, though. Oh, excuse us, ladies. Coming oh, the transition oh. from Noah to Chandler was just pristine. Seamless. Oh, wasn't it? And this run has been a whole lot faster than the other two heats because yep. they're about to dump this ball. And not too much in between. The top two teams that were thought were going to do well, and as expected, they're doing exceptionally well. Oh, rookie, look at this time. They're at 322, 323 right now. I can't run an 800 meter, <laughs> a 323, 800 meter on a perfect track. These guys just did it in the sand, and they did it with a D-ball. And now you see these gents, as soon as they dump their ball, heading right back down for that hard-packed sand closest to the water. Much easier to run down on that hard pack. Tola Maracanio, now Olsen, Chandler Smith, Bailey Martin, Jay Crouch, Royce Dunn. Very familiar names at CrossFit Games time. Ricky Garrard Every in the one of third them. pack. And Chandler lighting it up here Saturday night oh. last year. What the hell? Oh, what Noah. Probably you're pushing him. Noah pushing him along. Trying to keep pace, yep. which is really important. And Noah. it looks like Noah will be the first athlete to hit the D ball once he hits the top. And Noah's that sort of guy where he's going to say, not you guys do the work and I'll follow. I'm going to lead. Yep. Follow me. Exactly. I'm so excited to see him if he really does go team this year. I think, you know, he can be such a selfless, selfless athlete like that. Joel Malinia. 
and Johan Roberts, the two other team members from Ricky Garrard's team. All of these teams making it back up to the lighthouse. Right around five minutes, so fast compared to some of the other teams we've seen. And of course, the California girls, one of the first ladies teams to make it up to the lighthouse. You can imagine with Danny and Jesse, those D -ball, dead ball queens are gonna be nothing. I mean, Carvel, one of our locals. We went and trained at her gym yesterday. Yeah. Husband, husband Phil sorted us out. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for that hospitality. I'm not sure how why we drove there from the Sage Hotel. It was sunny about 30 second drive, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Noah. Lazy, lazy is as lazy does. That's it. And Noah well, Olsen getting, getting to work. No right. And getting it pushing the back from the judge too. Yeah. Getting your right lane. <laughs> She's moved him right over. As the ladies start walking up the stairs as well. Let's head down to Bella Martin, who is at the lighthouse at Wollongong. So not only did Noah get to this dead ball first and immediately start trying to work on reps, you saw that no rep, he was in the wrong lane, but Chandler saw that some of the other teams were kind of starting to overtake them and he hit the Jets. Fastest I've seen him run this entire 800 just to get to the D ball first before the other teams. That's the energy they're bringing to event number one today. Yeah, it looks like Bella, this heat is a little bit faster than the previous two, would you agree? Absolutely. California girls are starting to get on to those D-ball queens. Looking great in the pink. I love a team that matches. I think it just takes the teamwork and energy to the next level. Well, you love pink anyway, so <laughs> yeah, we, we know. That's really what it comes down <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, and Aidy Karnowitz with her pink hair coming up. You'll enjoy that one as well. But a number of teams having the nous to get to the dead ball quickly, but we've seen some teams struggle at your end. What do you think the struggle's been when they get to the lighthouse area where you are? I think it's the difference between carrying that D ball on the sand and then starting to do the cleans here. While the individuals were able to do the gymnastics and then run here and they didn't have to carry the ball on the sand, I'm really starting to think that that carry is starting to wear on the athletes and taxing their cores a little bit more, so they might be a bit more tired getting to the D-balls. For sure, but it looks like, you know, knowing that you're in a rotation means you can handle those D-balls a bit faster than the individuals did. Would you agree? You're, you're correct on that, but also these ladies, they are flying at such a quick pace. Once they're done with their allotted number of reps, they are on their hands and knees dry heaving a little bit, just trying to come back to reality. So when it's their turn to get back onto the D-ball, they're ready to go. Dry heaving, okay. We've, <laughs> we've, been, we've had grunting earlier, we got dry heaving now. We've had everything squawking from the seagulls you're in as well. Thank you, Bella Martin, for the update. And what an epic view of athletes doing fitness. Oh, it doesn't get much better. Beautiful bodies, beautiful location. People around have just got to be loving watching this. California girls in pink. Jesse Smith currently with the D ball and really just ripping it once she gets it to the hip. Quick and efficient. You can see, like Bella said though, you know, Danny was hands on her knees there, but that's what you gotta do. It's about a sprint and a recovery right now. Emily Rethwell with her last set of 10. You can see Emily, she doesn't even lap it. She just goes right to her body. Some of these athletes will kind of get it to their lap, get their hands underneath it, and then get it up over the shoulder. Emily just goes right up that body, never pauses at the lap. And podium place getter from last year, Gemma Ho, currently the bottom of screen, going to work from Star Strength Fitness Alley with Charlotte Baldwin and Abby Carvel, who we just spoke about. Great community 
Abby and Phil have created down here with Fitness Alley just around the corner from Wynn Stadium. And Gemma Hoke moving from individual to team, just like Jay Crouch has done. Want to tick that box, come well, away with a championship. For sure. <laughs> and if you think about where this event lies in the competition season, you know, in a lot of ways, team is a great way to do this. And speaking of Jay Crouch, there he goes. Team Frog Grips, first one's off the dead ball cleans but right behind them the hombre hombres it's got to be the greatest team name of all time <laughs> the prince of the pacific region jay crouch bailey martin making his open games appearance this year went as a teenager royce dunn who has competed in just about everything possible in the last 12 months. <laughs> Noah Olsen leading the charge on the way back. Look at that. <laughs> Noah. And happy about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Noah always has time and energy for a smile, right? But at any time of day or night, mid-workout, doesn't matter. He's so good like that. Star Strength Fitness Alley trying to get these ones done. And the oh, California no. girls are on the way. Not surprising. First ladies off that dead ball. Time impressive. Oh, not even halfway through that time cap yet. So you see the team line up and they get registered for the Down Under Championship. And you've got Noah Olsen, Paul Maracanio, and you've got Chandler Smith. You go, okay. How are we going to combat that? <laughs> we've got some weapons out there. So we've got a Royce Dunn, Bailey Martin, and a Jay Crouch. Right. We'll raise you that. <laughs> right. Gemma Hope passing Jesse Smith, Charlotte Baldwin at the back, and Abby Carvel. So Star Strength Fitness Alley getting those D-balls done very quickly. Yep. And if anyone knows this beach, it's got to be Abby Carvel. Right. <laughs> this is her This is her. <laughs> this is stomping her. ground. Christy Hollard there coming through for next Letica Gold. Justine Beath, Jaylee Mancy, and Alethea Boone at the back there for the Fit Mummers. Uh, sorry, Amy Alessi in there as well. Bryony Chalice just ahead of Amy for her next Letica Gold team. It's going to be pretty tight for these ladies. Oh, for sure. What do you think gymnastically? Amy Alessi, exceptional gymnastically. Alethea Boone, yep. the same. So once they get there, we're on. Yep, as, as long as they can make it through this next run, put Alethea on that bar, and she's going to chomp away at those bar just, muscle ups. Justine Beef, don't discount her either. Yep. <laughs> but what a great team. Yeah. Get the fit mamas. Yep. This is what we can do. And to just see them out there competing again, I love it. 13 minutes down, so just about at the halfway point of event number one. This is the third and final heat of the male and female teams. Get to the points. Started with an 800 meter dead ball carry. Got themselves to that beautiful Wollongong lighthouse where they did 60 dead ball cleans. 20 reps each, switching every 10. Now they carry this ball back down the beach where they'll face a pull-up bar and 60 bar muscle-ups. 25-minute time cap for these athletes. And quite possibly, every team in this heat could finish. The EXF team just about to start their way down the stairs with Moses Patello with all that games experience. EXF team from last year, Alex Herowini and Matthias Samuli, part of the team this year at the Torian Pro for EXF. Katie Karnowitz bringing her team back with Jesse Ward and Beck Glenister. Great no, little... no stranger to this competition floor nope. either. <laughs> Tolly, you're making things harder oh, for yourself. Yeah. Get <laughs> out of the water. <laughs> you don't want to go knee deep. No. But this is where this is where the boys from Ombre Hombres have got a little bit of an advantage. They can see ahead where the boys from Team Frog Grips are running, where it's going to be flatter, where it's going to be deeper. Yep. 
and they can start moving things around. Jay Crouch currently leading his team with the dead ball. Five games appearances for Jay Crouch already. And, and this past year was such a great year for Jay Crouch. Backing up a top 10 finish at the games, at the top 10 finish at Rogue. I mean, after finishing the Down Under Championships. Ah, Noah Olsen oh, yes. making a little move right here at the end. Big time. Getting ready for that transition. Look at how smooth the ombre ombres are on that transition. And I think that was done deliberately to get in front and go, hey, boys, yep. we're right here. We yep. ain't going anywhere. We're racing. And so Royce goes, hang on a minute. We'll see that and we'll raise you this. <laughs> Mayhem versus everybody. I don't know if you heard that yelp from Royce as he dished the ball up. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Jay losing it off the shoulder. They'll still have enough of a lead. And Royce. And saving Bailey for the yep. gymnastics. Yep. Now that was crucial. Let Royce carry this dead ball in. Talk about Clyde style horses. Yeah, oh. There he is. <laughs> Look at his legs. <laughs> Load him up. So Jay will take his time. He'll probably go third on the bar muscle ups. Gabby Napper. Oh. There's the dry heaving yep. we were talking <laughs> Bella was talking about <laughs> earlier. You saw it and heard it. Here comes Chandler. Oh, he's pushing on that run. And athletes now making their way. Here come the men of Team Frog Grips. Like Rookie was saying, they probably saved Bailey Martin at the end of that run. So he can hop right up on that pull-up bar. Again, no set number on how many reps these gents have to do and ladies on the pull-up bar versus what they had to do on that dead ball. So Bailey Martin, if he wants, can do all 60 bar muscle-ups. Up against Noah Olsen, right to his left. Great first set. Royce with a high catch on his muscle-ups. Very good from Royce Dunn and for a That's big- That's not a small human. Oh, for a big man, he moves exceptionally well. And if you wanted a race, if you wanted a battle, and we knew the top two teams coming in were gonna be probably these two, they're giving us exactly what we want from event number one, yep. we love it. Tola looking also really good. assume that most of these teams are going to split it up in sets of 10. Right behind Jay Crouch, you see Ricky Garrard chipping away at their first set. Fit Mummers in front and Dignus Athletica at the back as the California girls come onto the floor. I think it's a little bit harder than a training run, Jesse. <laughs> 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 yeah, although she still looks pretty good. Look at her. She's going to hop right up on that bar as well. Chandler to work. About just over six minutes to get the remainder of these 60 reps done. I spoke about Ricky Garrard earlier with Ricky and the boys, with Joel Molinia and Johan Roberts, two of the youngsters in the sport. I don't think their combined age hits 40. <laughs> so he does, they're just onto the left of screen. Mm -hmm. And Ricky, you can hear him talking in the background exactly what they need to be doing. A role Ricky's not used to doing, but, but one that may assist him later on. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Jeremy, it's, you know, you wanna be really good at something, Teach somebody else how to do it. Mentor somebody, teach them. Noah, business, look at it. How easy is it for Noah Olsen? But it is Team Frog Rips over the line to finish up under 20 minutes. And what a start from the boys 
from the Oceania region. The boys down under. Ombre Ombre is looking to finish up as well. California girls doing exceptionally well. Jesse very smooth. The Ombre Hombres just over that 20 minute mark and there wasn't too much in it about 15 seconds and i think things are going to get a little bit tighter as we roll along the weekend yep. but what a start to competition ricky garrard great to see that shoulder back intact and looking pretty good millennia at the back now oh that's why he did so well at the torian pro two years ago Oh, light and easy. It's like a meal brand, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell, you know, what, what Ricky did do good with those boys is as soon as Ricky dropped off the bar, the other gent was right up on there, and that's good enough for a third-place finish. Great job. Joel Molina at the back, Ricky Garrard. And Johan Roberts like up against the fence and pretty cooked. Yeah. But great for the youngsters to be kicking around. Joel Millenia gets to train with Ricky all the time anyway. But for Johan to come in and get that experience with a guy who's been here, done it. Like, there's so much experience there. And the ladies, we are waiting patiently. Oh, and you should... Alethea was just on the bar. She was so fast on those bar muscle-ups. Emma Hoke to the far right. Amy Alessi just getting off the bar now. Bryony Chalice moving forward. Emily Rethwell and Jaylee Manti. Ah, oh, the California girls. They are loving the sunshine and they're loving a heat win. Okay, a little bit tougher than a warm-up run, I think. <laughs> Still well under that time cap. Well under the time cap. It's great to see like, the camaraderie get on the competition floor you get a little bit at the cost of games yep. but you come you come out as a, a three-girl team out here in Australia in the middle of nowhere really right and the wow. bonding that will go on not just because it's from the same gym but you probably get a little bit closer together wouldn't you definitely I mean these girls went skydiving together they went <laughs> they went and pet koalas together they went surfing together star strength fitness alley getting it done the fit mum is still up and now two and a half minutes till we hit our time cap. Watch this oh, from Alethea. Alethea. Seriously? She barely has to press out on those. So she represents New Zealand in gymnastics and weightlifting. If that's not a perfect recipe <laughs> for a CrossFit athlete. Next, Letica Gold finishing up. The bottom of screen, Amy Alessi, Bryony Chalice, and Christy Hollard. The Fit Mummers, Justine Beef, great to see her back in competition. Alethea Boone and Jaylee Mancy are done. A lot of familiar names on the competition floor. Dignus Athletica, they are done as well. Jack Monaghan, Regan Burley, and Dignus owner, Costa Illich. And now, the Renegade Girly Pops with Gemma Ellis, Bailey Rogers, and Gabby Napper just coming into the arena now. They are going to run out of time. Team EXF getting finished up. And the Renegade Girly Pops, Bailey Rogers taking out the New Zealand Nationals last week. Great to see Bailey back in competition as well after that back injury. And less than one minute now before we hit our time cap. And the final time we will see these athletes on the competition floor outside. We're going to roll things inside shortly. And I tell you that the floor inside looks way better than last year. 
cool, calm and collected Noah Olsen. That's the thing that frustrates me about elite athletes. <laughs> they do workouts, they do right. events and that sort of thing. And they sit there and they go, yeah, cool. Okay, so what next? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, here I am gasping for breath. But less than 10 seconds now before we finish the third and final heat of the elite men and women for Down Under Championship 2023. And for day one, what a great start, Annie Sakamoto. I mean, could you <laughs> not have picked a more picturesque way? And like we said earlier, Rookie, the fitness gods shine their sunny skies down upon us. It was such a perfect opening event and morning for the Down Under Championships 2023. And this third heat of elite teams absolutely brought the heat with them. 800 meter D-ball carry. Most of them chose to run in that water line, if not in the water. And they set a blistering pace all the way up to that first set of D-ball cleans. It was the California girls though, no surprise that not only got up to the D ball, the dead ball cleans first, but got through them first. We knew it was going to be a race between Team Frog Grips and the Ombre Ombres, and a race it was indeed, all the way up to the very end of that run. You see the Team Fit Mamas there with Alethea Boone. Oh, and it's the handoffs that could make a big difference on this med ball run. But in the end, it was Team Frog Grips and their bar muscle-ups that brought them the first event win for the elite teams. Jay Crouch, Bailey Martin, Royce Dunn, all individual games athletes, and most definitely the force to be reckoned with in the team side this weekend. Oh, it's been a great battle so far for the ladies and the gents for day one and trying to throw the gauntlet down, stake in the sand as California girls finish up their event one. It's like, okay, this is what's happening this yep. weekend. But what a great start to competition. Event one in the books for Down Under Championship 2023. We're gonna finish up here at the Wad Life Field and head inside. And we have got more action coming to you too. Don't go anywhere. Make sure you stay tuned right here to the YouTube broadcast or on the Facebook or the web page as well for the Down Under Championship. We will be back when we're backside inside the arena in not too long. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you then.
mind. Um, and one of the things that I like to ask people, um, does anyone know how long Aboriginal people have occupied this land? Can anyone tell me? No? Well, there's a little, little bit of learning that is needed to do. A bit of history wouldn't go astray. And that's what I try and encourage people to learn a little bit about Aboriginal history. It doesn't take long, doesn't take much. And if you didn't understand that Aboriginal people have been here for 65,000 years ago, 65, maybe longer. We are the oldest living culture in the world. Um, and I don't understand why we, Australians, are not respecting that, understanding that. I think it's something that we should be proud of, that we have the oldest living culture in the world, right here on our doorsteps. So think about it, learn about it, and then you might get a bit of knowledge about things. Um, look, the welcome to country is that welcome. Um, it's a thing that I think we need to keep uh, doing and making sure that uh, Aboriginal people are respected in their own country. We're not perfect. We're not a perfect culture. But if anyone can tell me that there's a perfect culture running around, <laughs> let me know. Because I haven't seen a perfect culture yet. So we're just like everyone else. We have issues in our community. Same as you, same as other cultures. You just got to look around the world. The issues that are around the world that we have. We're lucky if you live in a place in Australia. It's a lucky country. It's a democratic society. We can do and come and go and do what we want. So let's make sure that we don't give that up in Australia. Yalanga, Nagami, Namamayui, Migas, Pirigas, Nangay, Nagamili, Nangamani, Yalami, Nilabora, Nangay, Banjai, Ni Malai, Ni Yui, Migay, Yalami, Yalanga. Welcome to the country, welcome to the land. The land we are leaning on today is the land of the Darrow people. I'd like us to acknowledge my elders. More? My elders in my community are important people. They're the people that have told our stories to us How's to that? make sure that we continue to tell our stories How's to the community, that? to people, and especially to our young Aboriginal kids growing up. But that's what I'm saying. I think it's not just for Aboriginal people. I think this is a, where we need Cat's to get it. Just let me know it's for all, like our, all of us. Aboriginal culture How's that? Australia. So learn about Australia. Learn about what happened in the past. The good, the bad, the ugly. Until we do that, people are not going to understand. So learn about our culture. As I said, it's not just for us, it's for you as well. We are a multicultural society. We learn about it for all other cultures that come to Australia, which is good. Well, let's learn about Australian Aboriginal culture. It's your culture. It's your Australia. So without any further ado, welcome here today. I hope you remember whatever you used to do, it looked like it's hard work to me. Um, yeah, whoever's winning wins, and uh, I hope you all enjoy yourselves, and uh, yeah, may the best man and woman win. All right, thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Tyler Sickworth and the applause of Richard Davis for the Walker Country and National Anthem. Not too far away, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the Athletics Hour for the adaptive event number two here in the Go One Arena, all part of the Down on the Tube 2023. Thanks for joining us here.
Welcome back to Win Stadium, Wollongong. The Down Under Championship for 2023. And day one action underway already outside on the field. Jeremy Austin with you, Annie Sakamoto and Bella Martin joining us on the competition floor. And what a morning we had, Annie. What a brutal morning we had, Rookie. Well, not you and I. What a brutal morning these athletes had. Running on the sand, either with or without a knee ball, depending on if you were teams or just individual. All those knee ball cleans, a little bit of pull-up bar work, and now we're inside. Go Wad Arena. We get to move some more weight, do some more monostructural activity on that bike. A little bit of gymnastics. One minute and some burpee minutes. box jump overs. Oh, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so we throw it back a little bit earlier. And we've got a grueling event. They've only had a little bit of time to recover before they're back now on the competition floor. That was a quick turnaround, Ricky. That was probably less than three hours. When we walked through the uh, athlete area, you saw a lot of those athletes taking advantage of the ice baths, the saunas, the body workers that are there. That was a long first workout. A lot of these athletes worked almost the entire 25 minutes and a quick turnaround. Let's see how they do. Event two for these individual ladies and gentlemen. I love these mixed heats. Oh, and something we, we reference a lot as an Aussie, let's get on your bike. So, great work from get Rob Porter to <laughs> name these Stand events. Underway for heat number one of on event number two. Day one of on the Down Under Championship for 2023. Back inside the Go Wad Arena, inside the Win Entertainment Centre. And, and now it doesn't matter now if it rains outside. <laughs> <laughs> and it probably will. We were talking about what a long, grueling event that first one was. This is the exact opposite, Rookie. We have an absolute bang in it kind of event. It's 27 burpee box jump overs, and then these athletes will do 21, 15, 9, 7, 5 calories on a C2 pike bike and deadlifts at 100 kilos for the gents, 70 for the ladies. So it's going to be fast and furious. 12 minute time cap. You can see it right there. Can we go back to generic benchmark workouts for CrossFit back in the day, back when even you were a kid. And 170 kilos was sort of the standard back then. And we're not changing things too much here. The same box height, 24, 20 inch. Well, you know why? The point is to go fast on this event. It is not to be slow. We were slow this morning in the sand. We want these athletes to go as fast as possible. Emily Clements, our first to move onto the bike, the 27 Burpee Bob jump overs completed. And we saw a little bit of our Emily last year here at Down Under 2022. And by all accounts, she has been training the house down. And of course, in lane one over there, we have James Hargreaves, one of the first gentlemen to the bike. You're not really going to see too much separation as we come down in the first couple of rounds. The barbells will signify who's in the lead. Johan Van Ziel, no shirt, center of screen. Doing very well. 1907, his time in event number one. And he was in heat number one and really set the standard for what was to come. Definitely. And the question is, can he do it again on a very different event? Although right now it looks like it's James Hargreaves over there in lane one for the gentleman that's on the barbell first. I would imagine the goal is 21 unbroken for all of these athletes. How long can you stay unbroken? James, another one of the Gold Coast athletes. Training at Bill Athletic with the owners who are actually competing. Adam Mancy and the individual, Jaylee Mancy for the Fit Mums. But Emily Clements ripping this barbell like it's no tomorrow. The 21 reps at this weight. We go to the original 
workouts back in the day in a 21-15-9 was sort of the staple and the 170s the staple we're just adding a few more rounds yeah well when you think about it we'll, we're still starting with 21 and 15 and 9 so you've got to go for unbroken there then we go seven and five and that's just an all-out rip it and rip it this really is an absolute sprint workout jordan malm as well joining emily clements on the bike all the gents back on the bike for round number two of the 15 calories. Emily Clements has set up herself with a very nice lead though, going into the second bite. But look at this, Johan Artery back on the bar for his 15 deadlifts. Him and James seem to be having a two-man race right now. Brody Preston, the third female to the bike, Georgia Pryor. One of the last with Alice Scott to get on the bike for this round. Georgia had a great event won this morning. She placed sixth in the get to the point event. Great way to start the competition. Can she follow it up with another good event? Time cap of 12 minutes. We have a long one earlier on. This sort of time cap, this is sort of generic, pure CrossFit time cap in between that sort of 10 to 14 minutes in range. Right, this is the make it hurt a little bit range, right? You gotta start off hot and you gotta finish hotter. Descending rep scheme, there's just oh. no reason to slow down. <laughs> Dangle that carrot, come on, it's not that hard. Yeah. It's getting easier. Emily Clements jumping ahead, a good two-horse race. Johan Van Ziel now jumping ahead of James Hargraves. Jordan Malm joining Emily Clements. Looks like athletes are gonna go way under time cap here. Oh, for sure. Johan Van Ziel moving forward for the gents. Johan seems to be getting faster and faster. Emily Clements on the female side, trying to match him rep for rep. Emily Clements finishing up 17th here last year and a point to prove. Emily running back to her bike. She only has two sets left, the seven and the five. Johan now getting very close. And what a start to competition. Johan Van Ziel, <laughs> the walk, run back <laughs> is a little bit difficult, but Johan taking out another heat win. Such a good start for Johan. Emily Clements now moving forward. Hargraves. The Gold Coaster, over the line. Gold Coast, one, two. And now, <laughs> the, oh, the baseball slide is in. Here goes Emily, last five calories on the bike. See a lot of the gents have already finished. Smiley Smith. Coming to the bar for the final time. Jordan Mal moving forward just behind your leader, bottom left of screen, Emily Clements. Emily now, the final five reps of the deadlift. And she has done exceptionally well. You talk about progress from last year to this year. Oh. Emily. Oh, you can see that run. <laughs> you know what it is, rookie. Your quads are smoked from the bike. Your posterior smoke from the deadlifts. You don't know if you should walk, run, or roll to the finish line. Brody Preston, second over the line for catching up a little bit of time at that back end with the shorter rep scheme yep. and faster transitions. Jordan Malm, she is over the line as well. Butter to Will Carney, one of our local athletes, part of the Proven Brigade. Georgia Pryor right there finishing up. Again, she had a great event one. She 
need to have a strong finish to back that up. Ella Price done. Ella Scott, our youngster. Youngest to qualify for the Torium Pro this year at 18 years of age. Wow. Time cap, what time cap? <laughs> Alice Scott, the last athlete on the four. She's got just five deadlifts left. And look, we're still well over three minutes to that time cap. Scott finishing up Georgia Pryor. Catching up a little bit of time, but Emily Clements getting the job done. All these athletes started off with 27 burpee box jump overs. They had to be fast on this first 27 reps. And that's exactly what Emily Clements was. She was so fast on those burpee box jumps. Got herself to the bike first. Set herself up with a great lead. 12 minute time cap. That was fairly generous considering the time these ladies got it done. But you mentioned it. The burpee box jumps at 24-20. That's where you can send it. But then you get 20 reps deep and you go, uh-oh. I'm in too deep now, I've got to keep going. You have to, you have to. This is a full send kind of workout and that's exactly what James Hargreaves did. Maybe a little too hot because Johan was able, Johan Von Ziel was able to come up and catch him at the very end. Emily Clements seemed to play her cards exactly right. She never slowed down. And let's head down to Bella Martin on the competition floor. Clements, you came 17th last year. Yeah. Now you've got a point to prove, and that's exactly what you did yeah. in the second event. What was the intensity like? How did you keep your head down? Um, uh, look, I know that I'm pretty good on the bike, so it's kind of like just keep what, doing what you can do on the bike and then let everything else kind of fall where it, um, where it does. But, yeah, I did have a point to prove. It was good to not, nice to get that um, win under the my belt. Yeah. So you can say that's something we can expect from you more this weekend? Uh, I hope so, because that's not typically, like apart from the bike, that's not typically a strong workout for me. So, um, yeah, surprising myself in a weaker workout. Hopefully we can see some more good results over the next couple of days. Well, we love it. Hopefully your time stands up. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Bella Martin. Heat one done of the individual males and females for event number two at the GoWad Arena at the Wind Stadium. We'll be back for heat number two very soon. Welcome back to the GoWad Arena Wind Stadium. 
Day number one, and it's event number two, Jeremy Austin, and he's Sakamoto. Bella Martin with you, and Annie, that was quite quick in heat one. <laughs> uh, we expected quick, that was quicker than we expected. Three, everybody was done three minutes before the time cap, so a little different than the first event this morning. I uh, expect nothing less from the ladies and gentlemen in heat two here. On your bike. On your bike and hike, Rob Forte with some wonderful programming once again. Event number one, rolling earlier. But we have got event number two now, and you said on your bike. On your bike, here's what it is. 27 burpee box jump overs right into 21.15.975. Reps of C2 bike calories and deadlifts for the ladies at 70 kilos and for the gents it's 100. Here's what I love, Rookie. This morning we had a mixture of gymnastics, weightlifting and monostructural. Guess what? We've got it again, but in a very different format, a much faster format. Toby Crouch. Doesn't look uh, anything like Jay, does he? Not, not a bit. Dad, uh, Darren Crouch walking past here earlier and very supportive of his two boys. And he's taken up his spot. We'll find him in a sec in one of those corporate boxes behind Christina Libertatakis, just at the other end. Christina who finished 15th in event one. She needs to make up some points here. And did make up some ground. Once she did. The gymnastics on the back end of event number one. And what do we start with here? Some and gymnastics. Great to see Andrew Sample. I caught up with him a little bit early. He said his back was a little bit cactus from the D-balls, but he said he's going to give this a go and see what happens. Cactus? Like, no good. Cactus. <laughs> I learn something new every day. Underway for heat number two, event two from the Go Wad Arena. Fantastic fast footwork from... Christina living the talk is right there. Look how fast her feet are over that box. Well, Christina doing very well. Her individual quarterfinal, she was first place in the African region. Did a fourth at the Renegade Games over there. Did, didn't qualify for the CrossFit Games. But finishing here third last year behind Gemma Hoke and Maddie Sturt. So we know she's a very capable athlete. Toby Crouch staying a lot more upright in his burpee box jump overs. He hasn't got that Jay Crouch, Crouch. foot, foot oh. dragging <laughs> type of box jump that you see Jay do. So right. he's more of a two feet kind of guy. Yeah, a little more extended, <laughs> a little more two feet on the a jump. Little, a little bit, little bit taller as well. Andrew Sample, last five reps to go as the ladies. Look at the talk as uh, judges has her hand up. Amy Kringle, first to move on to the bike for the ladies, and what a start she's had to competition yeah. as well. Third place in that event one. She wants to back it up with another top five finish. George Regis, CrossFit Adelaide. Now Christina's on the bike. But as Amy did in event number one, she got out to a lead and I think she's determined to hang on to that. Sample, Sam, let's hope he can hang on. You, you gotta wonder how he's gonna feel with that back on those deadlifts. Deadlifts, exactly. Hopefully not cactus. <laughs> Lisa Burrell at the bottom left as Amy Kringle. Look at those quads on that bike. I, She's I don't loving know, it. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> a great crowd in for a Friday as George Regis gets underway. George with the double overhand, not even mixing the grip. Ah, and there's Sample, looks pretty solid on those deadlifts. Right next to him is Adam Manzi. Kringle. These reps are so easy. You talk about efficiency of barbell movement. You can nail this. It is going to cut down your time considerably. Kringle, first to move. She 
Michelle Hayes looking good as well. But Kringle to the far left in the maroon and black getting started on that cycle for the gents. All bar. Jack Jeffrey on the bike now. Oh. It looks like it is going to be. Kringle has a good lead right now on all these other ladies. Daisy McDonald jumping into second. Livetatakis having to battle a little bit. Breaking up those reps. Regis, still your leader for the men. Kringle, your leader for the ladies. Things are going to get a little bit tighter for the men in the next minute or so. But Kringle, the determination, just I, looking at the screen, looking at her pace. And watch this, Rookie. This is what I like about Kringle. She barely bends her knees. She just, she actually just rounds her back a little bit, really utilizing the posterior side of her body on these deadlifts, saving those quads for the bike. A couple of no reps. Her judge is being really on top of that extension at the top. Regis, top left of screen on the bike. He's just about to finish up. Adamanti, now second. Jeffrey nearly a round behind for the ladies. It is a one-horse race, and that is Amy Kringle. Manti trying his hardest to catch up some time to George Regis. I can only imagine the lactate in those legs. You just got to override it with that brain. Regis, and now just dropping the resistance a little bit, yep, just to ease off. So getting the work done early on, and working harder, and now we can kick it back a little and work a little bit easier. Keep those RPMs up, but just turn that resistance down a tiny bit. You see, Kringle just got off the bike, and she's starting in on her nines. So we talk about transition time. The rep scheme gets lower and lower. And 975, we're used to that being a really short time frame to get through that work. Your transition time gets longer, the further the bar gets away. You've got to speed up those runs. Your legs, they don't want to work. No. And we saw that when those ladies were finishing. They didn't know how to get to that finish line. Amy Kringle, she's been delivered a couple of no reps, but she's not let it phase her. Manzi running back to the bike. Yep, as Regis moves to the barbell. The last five for George Regis from CrossFit Adelaide. And he will be the first athlete over the line in sub six minutes. Wow, half the time cap. Kringle, the last couple of reps now on her sevens. And how about this? Samble's getting on the bike, which means he survived this event. Love to see Great it. Great news for <laughs> Andrew Samble. As Mansi is done in 6.17. Daisy McDonald now moving on to the sevens. But Kringle out in front. And the last five calories on the bike. She's center of screen at the bottom as Toby Crouch finishes up for the men. Last couple of reps for Amy Kringle. Five, in fact. Thor Heinel finishing up for the men as well. Andrew Samuel, he's holding oh, that back. He's grabbing so his back. Let's hope that's not too bad. But Kringle, an outstanding first two events for Amy Kringle. Getting in around 6.50. So two heat wins for Kringle. And what a great start to competition. Oh, yeah. And that kind of stuff just feeds on itself, right, rookie? Winning's a habit, isn't it? <laughs> McDonald will be next to finish. Livetatakis has lost some ground. Daisy McDonald. And sometimes in events like this, the leg burn's bad when you're competing, but afterwards. It's the worst. All of a sudden, everything catches up to you. Your breath, the lactate. Michelle Hayes is going to be the next athlete finished. No, it's not. It's going to be Lisa Burrell. It's going to be a tight oh, one as well. Nothing like a race to the finish on noodles for legs. <laughs> Jess Green over the line as well. Again, that time cap is going, but we still have Christina Livetatakis 
And Sample is up and moving, which is good news. Thank goodness we've got Andrew Alekna in our athlete area with treatment. So Sample can go straight in there. Because his day is done. And Livetatakis rounds off heat number two for the female individual competition. And again, rookie, all these athletes well under the time cap. We're not even at the nine minute mark yet. Everybody's done. Maybe it should have been a 10 minute time cap. Heat two of event two going down on your bike. Started with 27 burpee box jump overs. Classic gymnastics movement right here. And it was Christina Livetakis that came out hot out of that gate. Same with George Regis. But it was George Regis who made his move on the bike, as did Amy Kringle. She was so smooth on the bike. Livetakis ends up having to break up some of her deadlift reps, and that's where Amy Kringle was able to take over. Adam Manzi trying to hold on to George Regis, but George Regis just set too big of a lead, as did Amy Kringle. And the heat winners, both Regis and Kringle, for event two. Look at the smile on Regis's face. And that lady who has had a great two events is standing by with Bella Martin now. Amy, I have seen you on so many competition floors, but today something seems a little bit different. Back-to-back -back heat wins by over 30 seconds in event number two. What's new with you? Sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> um, nothing new, really. I've been trying to, well, I'm surprised with the heat win, because I haven't, running is the thing I do well at, and I haven't been doing much of that. So to come third overall in that run one was, I guess, quite good for me. And um, then this one is like, I love the bike. I do like deadlifts and burpees. I don't mind them either. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. You've kept your head down all day today. You've been in the lead by a lot of a margin here. What can we expect from you tomorrow and going forward for the rest of the weekend? I'll just try hold this and see where it gets me. But yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. My last, my first competition since the semifinals in June. So nice to be back on the floor. <laughs> well, we're clearly like, doing something right, and we're happy to have you back out onto the floor, Amy. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, Bella, and thanks, Amy. From the Isle of Man, represent, <laughs> I tell you what. It might be the Isle of Woman pretty soon. Pretty much, exactly. And a great start, but going back to event number one, get to the point for the ladies, Maddie Sturt in the lead currently, Jamie Goodwin. Yeah. Welcome back to competition. Young Mateo is going to be absolutely <laughs> stoked, but Amy Kringle in third position, and that result there is going to be perfect for her moving forward. Grace Walton, Marnie Sykes rounding out your top five. And don't worry about Daisy McDonald either. She's just That's kicking right. on her. Exactly. exactly. Uh, now, Sneaky Pete, not to be sneaky anymore. Jono no. Dunlop, we expected him to do something special and he's done it normally on the team comp competition with Torian and then Luke De Jong with that new haircut of his <laughs> and Thor Heinel, Johan Van Ziel, Zane Shelabere Healy, very tight with those times as well and Dante Karangaroa, you said it earlier on, look out for him, hey he's right there. Yep, all those gentlemen have set themselves up well going into this second event of the day. Heat two done. We'll be back with heat number three in not too long. We'll see you then. At Down Under this year, I just want to test myself. I want to be standing on top of the podium again. I'm putting myself out there and I'm going to give it everything I've got.
Welcome back to Go Wad Arena. And the third and final heat of the individual men and women for event number two. I can't believe today's nearly over, Annie Sakamoto. <laughs> we blinked and it was over. <laughs> Although these athletes might not feel quite the same, huh, Rookie? That's not, not at all. Jeremy Austin with you and obviously Annie Sakamoto with me. Bella Martin will join us on the competition floor a little bit later on. And the results, Maddie Sturt out in front, Jamie Goodwin in second. And can Maddie keep backing it up and take out another down under title? Well, you know, just like the previous event, right when we thought Amy Kringle set the time to beat, Maddie came in and absolutely smashed that time. So wouldn't surprise me if she did it again. Tyler and Williamson there as well. And then event number two, it is on, on your, your bike. bike. <laughs> 27 burpee box jump overs, and then these athletes will move to the bike. And some deadlifts, 21, 15, 9, 7, 5 reps of both. The gents are deadlifting 100 kilos, ladies 70. So kind of traditional, typical CrossFit weights. Zane Shalabair Healy doing well. Top five after event one, top five last year. It's a good place to be, but first is even better. Tell you what I want to see. I want to see the look in Pete Ellis's eyes again. Oh. How about that interview? No. I think Laser his, cutters. I think his eyes were closed oh, and rolled no, he's back. Got, he's got it again. <laughs> Underway for heat number three. Event two on your bike. Live from Wollongong, Australia at the GoWad Arena. Starting off with 27 burpee box jump overs. Just enough to really smoke those legs, get those lungs going. Let's talk about movement on burpee box jumps. What do you think would be the most efficient? We see a lot of split stance. Pete Ellis doing that right now, turning that 45 degree on. That's and, it. And not that 45, like 45 degree jump, rather than the front on or the lateral side on jump. Yeah, I think the way Pete Ellis is doing it is absolutely the most efficient if you can maintain it do you jump up do you step up oh from the burpee yeah you got to jump to be fast so we've got that quick step now yeah yeah i think to be fast you really have to kind of jump those feet now look to jean's one of those taller athletes as well he's about sitting at six two so a little bit of a benefit unlike yourself where he can jump a little bit less to get onto the box. Definitely, but he's got to go a little further down to get into that burpee, <laughs> exactly right? right. I mean, it's, it's the most beautiful CrossFit uh, movement as far as the tall man wins, the short man wins. All right. Hands in the air from a lot of judges. First one on the bike, though, sneaky. is Julia Hannaford. And sneaky Pete Ellis for the men. Annika Greer moving to the bike. Pete Ellis was on a mission this morning, running to the lighthouse, running back. And I spoke to Julia Hannaford. I don't know if you were tuning into the Torian Pro earlier on this year. She came out with a cowboy hat on and the crowd went nuts. And I said to her, <laughs> to bring the hat, she goes, it's a Saturday thing. I went, okay. So she's gonna bring the cowboy hat tomorrow I love afternoon. It. Is there a name for an Aussie cowboy or a cowgirl? Like in Hawaiian, it's a paniolo. Oh. Taught you something, finally. There we go. I won't remember that, but yeah. anyway. Pete Ellis about to get off the bike. Hannaford, not too far away. Pete Ellis, Zach Thomas, one and two. Zach, the Wollongong boy, probably sleeps at home. <laughs> Pete Ellis didn't even stop to think about that barbell. His hands were on it almost before his feet got to it. No ladies on the barbell yet, but it's going to be Marnie Sykes first to the bar. Right behind her is Taylor Williamson. Grace Walton next for the ladies. For the men, Pete Ellis, Zach Thomas, Zane Shellebear Healy. Pete with a little bit of a knee lead. Level pegging for Zach Thomas. Zane Shellebear Healy. Annika now pulling level, moving quick with Taylor Williamson. Oh, Annika is moving so oh, fast wow. on that barbell. 
She has caught up so much time on that deadlift. Well, this is where being shorter, that, that cycle time is much better for Annika than it is for Taylor. Emily DeRoy moving back, final athlete back after the 21s. The 15s is next. Ellis. Only one rep left for oh, Pete. Oh, Pete Ellis. He is looking in great shape. Look out, season 2024. Here <laughs> he comes. Taylor Williamson, an athlete that I was suspect to, do, suspect to do very well at this event. She's a high power output athlete, and that's what this one's all about. Well, let's talk about that for a second. You're in team competition for a long time. OC3, mayhem, proven. Hang on a minute, you're on your own. How does that change your mindset, your strategy? You know, I would imagine that you actually, you got to push a little harder when you're on a team because there's others that are relying on you. When you're on your own, you don't let anybody down but yourself. A lady who is moving just as fast as Annika Greer is a Maddie Sturt. You talk about short cycle ranges, Maddie Sturt has got just that. Oh! Oh, oh Maddie Yes, she does! Uh, she must have a faster one because she just overtook Greer and Williamson. Her pace for the 21s wasn't that fast, but the 15s was ridiculous. It's time to fang it, Wookie. Oh, Pete Ellis is fanging it, and he is heading straight back now. And he's about to lap a few athletes, but Pete Ellis... George Regas had an unofficial time right around six minutes in the last heat. Ellis is going into his last five deadlifts. The clock's only at about 5.15 right now. Ellis moving to the bar for the sevens. And having a look, Zach Thomas hot on his heels. The girls are moving fast as well. Maddie Sturt in the lead. Pete Ellis heading back. One rep ahead of Zach Thomas. Pete wants to go one, two. And at the time of 5.39, he's probably going to do just that. Sturt coming strong, but Ellis. Zachy just having a look over to see what Pete Ellis is doing. And what he's doing, he's about to finish. Pete Ellis, the last two reps. Ellis is done and heads his way to the finish line. Matty Sturt with the last five reps. Zach Thomas is in. Shellabear Healy with one to go. And Jono Dunlop, it's going to be Zane and only just. Sturt now back to the bike. As is Williamson. Oh, this is going to be a tight finish for the ladies yep. too. Three calories left for Maddie. Two. Sturt. Now the, oh, the crowd. The crowd erupts. is going wild. Williamson. Sykes. Maddie Sturt. What a move from Maddie Sturt. What a move at the nines from Maddie. Grace Walton, Walton getting ahead of Marnie Sykes and Taylor Williamson as well. So a great result for Grace Walton. See Annika Greer in the middle of your screen finishing up. Grace has absolutely emptied the tank. Emily DeRoy still on as Luke Fowler finishes up for the last of the males. One of the other athletes still on the floor finishing up is Julia Hannaford. She was the first lady off, I think the first athlete off those burpee box jumps. Emily DeRoy finishing up. Sub eight minutes for every athlete in that heat. That was smoking fast, rookie. Oh, wow. And some athletes were expected to do well have done just that. And a great start in here in the Go Water Arena.
day one of competition of the Down Under Championship for 2023. And Pete Ellis, not so sneaky anymore. <laughs> All eyes are on you, Pete. <laughs> you ain't gonna sneak past anybody anymore, buddy. Shoes off. <laughs> that what an event that was. Pete Ellis came out hot and was able to stay hot. Transitions were fast and furious. He never even thought about it. Marnie Sykes was fast to that barbell as well. First lady off the bike and to the barbell. Who was gonna be able to hold their pace though? Was it gonna be Zane Shelbert, Shelbert Healy, sorry? Or was it gonna be Pete Ellis? You know who it was gonna be? Maddie Sturt. She was kind of under the radar coming in. She hit those nines and just started to turn on the engines. In the end, it was Ellis that won it for the gents. And of course, the queen of the Pacific, Maddie Sturt. Second event win of the day. Not a bad way going into day two with 200 points. Oh, exactly right. And you think about competition, and we've only started at midday today, and I've just seen Jamie Goodwin's baby come onto the yeah, field. Yeah. Little Mateo, cute as pie. But it's like a, ha a, half, a half day, but we've got to go through tomorrow, and we've got so much more to go. And standing by with Bella Martin, sneaky Pete Ellis. Pete, back to back heat wins. There's a fire in your eyes. I saw it outside earlier and it's here again today, this afternoon. Let's talk about it. What's going into your mind as we're on this second event of the day? Just want to stack up those points as much as possible. And yeah. I don't want to just win. I want to be dominant. And that's the goal for the weekend. I am conscious of it, of course, but like, that's as fast as I can go. Had no impact where they were. I just try to dig deep and do my, well, go as hard as possible. I love the heart that I'm getting from you. I feel it and I love to see it from you. Tell me about what's gone into getting you here this year so far. What have you had to do? Well, it's not just one year. Like, the past six years, that's when I sort of started CrossFit. It's just been, trying to get to competitions like this, and now I'm here, it's like, I guess a slight switch, it's like, okay, how can I get to a point where I'm gonna be dominating? And that's my whole goal with training. I feel like, it's everything I do, I'm like thinking, I've gotta do more than everyone else, because otherwise I'll just be the same. You've gotta earn your spot, and I think you've earned your keep here this weekend so far. Two events down, plenty to go. Good day so far. Yes, excited for tomorrow, thank you. show he put on for us and for himself. Oh, big time. Can't wait to see what comes up tomorrow for the individuals, for the males and the females. We've got plenty more from those guys coming up tomorrow. But that's not all. But wait, we've got a set of steak knives coming. There's more. <laughs> a set of steak knives. <laughs> that's we got, it. We got teams oh, coming exactly up. Exactly right. We've got that coming up very soon. So don't go anywhere. We've got more action here from the Down Under Championship 2023 coming up soon.
Welcome back to Go One Arena. This is the Down Under Championship for 2023, Jeremy Austin. And his Sakamoto Bella Martin with you. And the elite women's standings after two events. Maddie Sturt, what a performance on day one, Annie. But Amy Kringle from nowhere. Well, when I say nowhere, the Isle of Man, but. <laughs> But she's done very well day one. Grace Walton, we expected her to do well, and she's up there. Jamie Goodwin. Oh. Yeah, a lot so. of names on that leaderboard that we were definitely expecting to see. Like you said, Grace Walton, Maddie Sturt, Marnie Sykes. But Amy Kringle has really impressed me in those first two events. Two very different events, rookie. And so to be sitting in second place, only 15 points behind Maddie Sturt, who won it last year. Great job, Amy Kringle. Emily DeRoy rounding out the top 10. Not Please. surprising, uh, considering she was on that LSKD Gold winning team last year. Big time. And Pete Ellis, I just spoke to him quickly. He said, don't call me sneaky anymore. It's not sneaky. I'm out there. I said, OK, done. Tick. Pete Ellis on top. All eyes on Pete <laughs> is now what we're at, right? Uh, John O'Dunlop and Johan Van Ziel equal second. Zane Shelabere Healy still in contention with a fourth position so far after two events. Zach Thomas still in there. And he, George Regas doing oh, himself George. some favors on that last event. Well, if you get high up on the leaderboard in an event, you're gonna move up the leaderboard. It's yep. a really simple game. Yep, when when you get thrown a nice pitch, you gotta hit a home run, and that's exactly what Regas did. Woo! And female teams from event number one. Earlier on today, the California girls getting the win with 100 points, Star Strength Fitness Alley, where we trained two days ago, I think. Is that why I feel so good right yes, now? Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> Next, Letica Gold, uh, based out of Cross Victoria. And the Fit Mamas, we knew they'd be there somewhere. And they are in the top five in peak 129. Alley, rounding out your top five. You can't forget about Schwartz CrossFit Melbourne. That's a, you know, quintessential CrossFit Games team, so not surprising. And for the men, what a battle it was up and down the beach. The team for grips, Royce, Jay, Bailey, getting, I don't know, notching the trunk of the tree or the belt over the ombre hombres with Tola, Chandler and Noah. But that was great. A couple of dogs from Benton CrossFit, Ben Garrard's gym and Star Strength Hockbury's finest. Well, great. But event number two, we'll get to right now. On your bike again, we have four time, 90 calories slash 66 calories on that C2 bike, 105 toes to bar, plus a overhead kettlebell hold. And then these athletes are gonna finish with 15 vertical box jump overs each and 27 deadlifts each. So a variation on the individual event we just saw but we've got some isometric holds with those kettlebells. We've got a little midline destroyer in those toes to bar. <laughs> I like that, midline destroyer. And then a quad burn on that bike. Talia Jordan. Hope young Ethan is doing well over in Western Australia. He should be watching mum going, come on mum, let's do this. Come on mum. I like this. We have a lot of athletes and a lot of action on the floor. A little different vibe than spread out all over the beach this morning. It's going to be a bit of mayhem in here, and I like it. There's a few bodies on the floor, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we came for. Had some judges in there as well. Yeah. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. I spied a young Amber Cohen from CrossFit Karuna. They are in lane number 10. And we'll get to a different variation of on your bike, Annie, and this one. Oh. Wow. Again, rookie, this is when you'd rather be an individual than a team. So for those athletes that are on the bike, they each have to hit 30 or 22 calories, but they can only be achieving those calories while their partner is holding those kettlebells overhead, locked out. Those arms have to be locked out. There can be no bend in the elbows. Meanwhile, their third team member is on the bar accumulating 
I believe it's 35, yep, sorry, 35 toes to bar. Now, just to note, Rookie, the athletes that are doing the toes to bar don't have to be doing toes to bar while the athletes are holding the kettlebells overhead. They can be doing those toes to bar whenever. It's just that the calories can't be achieved on the bike unless their partner has the kettlebells overhead. So again, a lot of bodies and a lot of action. The EXF gals, Natasha Dalglish, Tiffany Hunt, Tanea Yorston. Tiffany moving to the bike. And this is obviously hard to pace because you don't want your teammate to be doing that isometric hold for any longer than they need to. But here's the thing. So if you bike really fast, you're gonna be so gassed, it's gonna be harder to hold those kettlebells overhead. So there is a sweet spot, I think, Rookie, where you're sure. biking, <laughs> without a doubt, I mean, where you're biking fast enough that your partner isn't holding forever, but you're not biking so fast that you can't keep the kettlebells overhead when it's your turn to hold them. some of those arms and abs shaking with those kettlebells overhead. Elbows locked out. 16 kgs for the ladies, 24 kilos for the gents. And while that doesn't sound like a lot, you can see from those bodies shaking right there, it feels like a lot. And I love the way Rob Forte segmented the male and female teams alternating down the field. Oh, I just love this male-female teams out on the floor for everything. Because normally you've got two male teams competing against each other. Right. We're not going to put them in the same pull-up bar. But if we do male and female, it's like, this is okay. Yep. Well, mommy dogs, the first ones to those burpee box jump overs. Remember. Each athlete has to complete 27. Once they complete their 27 burpee box jump overs, they can move on to the barbell, and that allows the next athlete to feed in to their burpee box jumps. And the boxes alternated as well. And just to note too, on these burpee box jump overs, the athletes have to clear the box they cannot jump on like the individuals could. They must jump all the way over the box. You've got to give them some sort of challenge, don't you? Something a little, a little bit harder because you've got two people resting at the same time. So this is going to take a little bit more out of them. The power output's a little bit greater, but you've got two people resting, so they can cycle that through pretty well. Yep. So 15 baby box jump overs each, moving on to 27 deadlifts each. And the weight has gone up on these deadlifts as well. The gentlemen have 110 kilos on their bar and the ladies have 75. So not a lot heavier than the individuals, but enough to probably make those 27 not go unbroken and we saw some of our first athletes drop the bar already. Unbound athletic mommy dogs. Did I get that right? Dogs. Um, mommy dogs. 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 Our two male teams, CrossFit Karuna, as I mentioned earlier, Amber Cohen, individually making the Torian Pro this year. Love it. Look at this double overhand grip. The grit and determination yeah. is what I love. Yeah. 
Look at all these bodies on the floor, oh, rookie. <laughs> it's like a dance party, only not as fun. Head judge, Dan Williams, directing traffic in the middle of the arena. You go here, you go there. And the quicker they can get the athletes off the floor, the better. Yeah. <laughs> Clear some space. EXF, one out of three home. Looks like it is. Tempany Hunt finishing up. Frog Force. Can the Umami Dogs be that first team to send two athletes across the finish line? Here comes second. Second athlete across the line for the Umami Dogs. That means they only have one left. Strategy for this one. What a tough we, one to yeah. work out. Who's got less fatigue, especially after that run in the soft sand early with the dead ball. Somebody's gonna get a lot of rest on that back end, but that means all eyes on them. They have to just fang it to the end. Look at this, Umami Dogs coming in. EXF with two home. Now Yorston second over the line. Eight minutes in, we've still got four minutes left on our time cap. It's a good amount of time. And Karuna, a home. Oh. Josh, Josh Santa looked like he was on roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping he didn't just fall. Steph Gao, she's singling the final reps here. Shows you just how tired they are at this point. Some athletes finding this pretty easy, and some are crawling along the floor. And can you imagine how smoked their legs are after that run with the ball in the sand this morning? This is where recovery comes into play as well, especially with a three-day event. You better go put those legs right in that ice bath. Star strength, silver. They are in. Taylor Baker, Sarah Derrick. Lauren Fitzgerald. Natasha Dalglish now from EXF bottom of screen with only one to go. Oh, it's heavy. Oh. See your teammates trying to hold her up. Oh, oh. No. no. <laughs> there was no holding her up. That ain't happening. Shoes off, legs up, something. <laughs> oh, you mentioned it, the quads. There they are. Yeah. Oh, the cramping. Well, you could tell she was having a single, like the last probably 11 reps. Jordy Gunn, our final athletes on the floor. Look at how solid she looks on that deadlift though.
still with 1.15. Left of about time. time. Oh, yeah, plenty of time. And great to see the athletes coming onto the floor. This is CrossFit, Rookie. This is what it's all about. It's not always if you're the first to finish. It's just about finishing. Jordy Gunn from the Mayhem Underdogs. I have chicken skin right now. <laughs> I'm going to try not to cry on air. <laughs> but this is what it's all about. This entire stadium is rooting for her right now. Oh, no. <laughs> she went too oh. early. Too excited to get out of here. <laughs> I need to go recover. Jordy Gunn. Well done. And we wrap things ah. up with well over 30 seconds to spare in the time cap. And a heat one for the elite teams. Wow. Umami Dogs taking that one. That was a grueling event. Great start. And something we haven't seen in many competitions around the world is an isometric hold of some description. Right, exactly. Two arms, kettlebells. And we talked to the head judge, Danny, yesterday, who said they were going to be absolute sticklers about those elbows staying locked out. And All right, our, we're going to go straight down to our winners now for heat number one with Bella Martin on the competition floor. First things first, one, two, nine. I wanted to see you after event number one. Impressive performance, but I'm lucky enough to see you again. Congratulations, back to back. He wins, I love to see it. But I also want to say happy birthday, Jack. We've got a 21st birthday that we're celebrating here on the floor at Down Under. If you see him this weekend, he deserves a beer. He's 21. In my country, that's where you can start legally drinking. Guys, this event, a lot of volume. How do we go out and pace it? Um. It honestly wasn't no pacing, it was just go, go for it, just try to hold on and it hurt, uh, yeah, so it was good fun though. Definitely looked like it hurt, we have a lot of fitness left for the weekend, can we expect some of the same hurt from you later on? Uh, we'll give it our best. Yeah, nice, yeah we'll see how we go tomorrow, it's not his birthday so we might pull it back a bit. <laughs> well hopefully we'll see you tomorrow, happy birthday Jack. <laughs> Thanks Bella. Oh. Nothing like celebrating Sunday night here after a great weekend of fitness. Right, 21st birthday. I guess it doesn't mean as much here in Australia, but 21st birthday and oh, no, it's big. a weekend of fitness. Oh, no, it is. 21. Okay, big. good. 18. First tick, you can go drink. 21. Any excuse to go and drink again? <laughs> three years later. Yeah, yeah. We'll we celebrate twice. Isn't that three years? That's what I said. Didn't I say three years? I thought you said four years. No, no. Anyway. I could have said four. Anyway. All right. Heat one, done for the team. We have two heats to come. CrossFit, Brody Scott's gym. And Schwartz's CrossFit Melbourne were impressive as well. Not too far away from starting. Heat 129 Alley, keep your eye on them as well in lane 14. Underway for heat number two, our second last heat of the day. It doesn't even feel like it should be the end of the day yet. No. We're only just getting started. These athletes have not worked nearly hard enough yet, rookie. <laughs> oh, well, don't worry, their bodies will tell them differently tomorrow morning I, when they wake up. I think so. Look at this. After all that work in the sand and smoking those legs, they're going to start with a little isometric kettlebell hold overhead. And that's the only way their partner can be accumulating 30 or 22 of the calories, depending on if you're a male or a female, on that C2 bike. Georgia Smith ball with her back to us. You can see the shudder of her body as she's trying to stabilize that weight overhead. 
And a great shot from the Alpha Fit rig. And just in case holding two kettlebells wasn't enough on your midline, well, let's go ahead and tax it a little bit with 35 toes to bar as well. Peak 129, Ali, Caitlin, Danny, Abby Ashton, and Shelby Fennick getting to work. You see some of the athletes kind of pushing those kettlebells together overhead to try to help stabilize. Other athletes letting the arms stay a little bit wider apart. No matter what, those elbows have to stay locked out. <laughs> and then, <laughs> in the meantime, we're gonna tax your midline, your shoulders, and your ability to smile while working out. Oh, exactly, Holly, ho Holly Hiney, you expect nothing less, would you? <laughs> Holly at the CrossFit Games this year. Emily Townsend coming back, another mum on the floor. And also Alex Bullock, part of the team from PFC 3076 from Melbourne, making the CrossFit Games for the first time this year from the Torian Pro. So important to note, Rookie, that athletes that are on the bar doing toes to bar can be doing those toes to bar, chipping away at those reps, however, whenever they want. But the athlete on the bike can only be accumulating bike calories so long as the partner holding the kettlebells has them locked out overhead. So if your partner drops the kettlebells down onto their shoulders, you must stop biking and accumulating your bike calories. Laura Roberts, second in next to Tommy Galea. Laura from the Gold Coast as well. our first teams moving forward and we think back to the old level one and you go through your power output and power is obviously one of the 10 general physical skills name something better than either a burpee power clean or a box jump over where you fully got to get over the box it, that distributes more power output than this i love it name one I, I, <laughs> I love I'll, this. I'll give you till the end of the day. Okay, thank you. I love this burpee box, not on and over, but they have to clear the box. 15 reps for every single athlete. Jade Henderson from the Urban Gals, CrossFit Urban Energy on the Gold Coast, getting to work. towards our quarter mark of four minutes. These deadlifts, that sort of weight, and 27 of them. 110 kilos for the gents, 75 for the ladies. Highly unlikely that you're gonna go completely unbroken for 27. The question is, where do you break it up so that you don't smoke yourself too hard? Oh. Bodies in motion. Fenty Woodhouse. Sonia Mori. Getting to work. Now we talk strategy, who do you put first? Who do you put in the middle, who do you put last? Do you start out red hot and you bring home your slowest? Do you start out slow, bring it home quick? I think you have to save whoever's gonna need the rest going into this piece, right? So whoever is, I hate to say it, but your weakest link 
is going to need to go last because they're going to get the most amount of rest leading into the burpee box jump overs and deadlifts. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. I am. <laughs> Now talk to me about breathing in a 27 rep deadlift event after you've just gassed yourself with toe to bar, isometric, kettlebell holds and concept two bike. You know, for me, that's when I'm gonna pause at the top for a second and then that way I can also really utilize that rebound on the bottom. So you're gonna come up, you might take a breath at the top and then make sure you're using the ground to rebound on those deadlifts. I'm impressed. There's a few athletes out there going with a double overhand grip. He's so tough on the grip that way. Sonia Mori from Schwartz has crossed it in Melbourne, urging her team, Nicola Cummins and Poppy Hay, to bring it home, please. Star strength, gold are our first team over the line. Jody Gardner, Brody Scott, and Lachlan Park. Very impressive, that was right around the seven minute mark. Lachlan, very good last year. Great to see him back. So breathing at the top on that deadlift. Do you do a double breath? Maybe set at the bottom, breathe out, Breathe in. Two, breath, two breaths every deadlift I think is good, but for sure you want to make sure at the top you're going to do a little exhale, inhale. Greater West, they are in, in their maroon shirts. Still some teams with athletes back on the burpee box jump overs. Eight minutes down, we have four minutes remaining. Nicola Cummins joins Poppy Hay and Sonia Mori Schwartz's CrossFit Melbourne. Iconic name on this competition floor. And that hurts. Oh, <laughs> I almost cried for her right there. Salia <laughs> Manyweather right at the top of the screen in the blue, just having a little bit of a step back and a break. Sometimes you just need to just sit back. Yeah, and you know, I think you, you want to break it up before you have to, Rookie. So if you know you're not going to go in broken, you know you're going to break it into two or three sets, break it up before you have to so you can finish strong. Three minutes now left on our clock. Abby Ashton to the far right of screen. It's Caitlin Danny, not who twin sister Courtney, <laughs> but the actual Caitlin Denny. And Abby Ashton finishing up. Two and a half. It's funny, you look back on the floor, athletes are struggling, like max effort. You look to the finish line, there's so many smiles and relief. Once you cross oh, that red hard. line. <laughs> Once you know you've done the work, especially for the day. And again, every athlete finishing under the time cap. Greater West Connects getting the job done. Floor cleared at 9.55. So those extra two minutes not required. Well, there were a lot of bodies on the floor and bodies on the bar on that one rookie. I love the smile. Everybody having to carry their own load today. 35 toes to bar, 30 or 22 calories on that C2 bike, and an overhead kettlebell hold, double kettlebell overhead hold, into 15 burpee box jump overs. And that's when we saw all the bodies on the floor. 
the floor. 47 deadlift. Let's talk about bodies on the floor. Let's talk quickly. And a big thank you to all of our judges on the floor. Uh, what a tough gig, especially in an event like this. Right. This, these events don't work without judges. The judges are unbelievable, but they're willing to endure. Cannot thank those judges enough. We think it's chaos for us. Chaos for them as well. Yeah. And let's head down now to Bella Martin, who's with a very happy Poppy Hay, Nicola Cummins, and Sonia Mori from Schwartz's CrossFit Melbourne. Ready. I'm here with Schwartz CrossFit Melbourne. Ladies, we're pretty giggly today for having two events. Talk me through, how are we having so much fun? Oh, that was our mantra coming into it, you know. We were pretty stressed, pretty nervous, um, but we just looked at each other and like, we love doing this, that's why we're here. So let's just go out there and smash it. So I would say you've definitely been smashing it. You've been with the boys for event one and event two, and that's where you're stacking up. That's who you're having to push off of. Is that something we expected into today? Oh, I, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> We definitely had a discussion, yeah, and we were like, oh, if the boys are out there, that's who we're gunning for. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good to have them out there. Good fun. It's been hard, but yeah. It's good fun, and I guess that's the lesson here at Down Under. If you're having fun, you're going to perform well. So, see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. An iconic name, an iconic CrossFit gym in Australia, Schwartz's CrossFit Melbourne. Well, especially when it comes to team, right? Oh, so many times on the podium here and going to the CrossFit Games. And what a performance from the girls from Schwartz's CrossFit Melbourne. Congratulations to those girls. Go and have a well undress and put your feet up. Go and get the, those uh, recovery boots on or mm. something and yeah, calm down a little. <laughs> but keep the giggles going. I like that. If you're not having fun, why do it? Right? Yeah, Poppy Hay nailed it. Like, she's happy. If they're chasing down the boys and beating them, she's even happier, yeah, so that's there, great. There you go. Heat number three, not too far away. We'll get back to the final heat of the team competition coming up soon. I just want to prove that I belong, but if I do what I've been doing, I reckon that will happen pretty nicely, so. Just trying to be as disciplined as I can be involved with the community because that's what makes it as special as it is. At Down Under this year, I want to add to the trophy cabinet of not only an individual first place, but a team first place as well. This season, that's the goal. Final heats of day one of the Down Under Championship for 2023, Jeremy Austin. Annie Sakamoto, Bella Martin with you. What a wonderful day we're having. And now how much fitness can we fit on one floor? <laughs> a lot. There's a lot of fitness about to happen too. Event number two coming up on your bike. This is the final heat of the teams. Star Strength Fitness Alley. Nice and local, about a kilometre away from here, just down the road. We were there. We have the and California girls, and I, I love that they're going to be in the lane next to the Ombre Ombres. I don't know what you call it, but we call it playing for sheep stations, where you win a sheep station if you win. Like a people like winning a ranch or something. But we win sheep stations, so it's all for sheep stations right now. Sheep stations? Yeah, sheep stations like a farm. <laughs> Why don't you just I'm say like farm? A, well, it's like a sheep station. It's a saying. <laughs> Anyway, so we're playing for sheep stations. So that's why I think the Aussies are going to do better because we're playing for sheep stations. But anyway, <laughs> but we've got the California girls in the next lane. Right. We've got the Ombre Hombres. I, I and love here it. we go. I love it. So we have, we have a married couple, Jesse Smith and Chandler Smith, going against oh, each other. It's going to be bragging rights right now. And I love that they're in the same lane because it's going to be like, uh -huh. it's, not, it's not just a male female thing, it's an American pride thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and a sheep station thing. Oh, they can win a sheep station while they're here. <laughs> Noah Olsen kicking things off for the Ombre Hombres. Shania Vicky on the bike. 
on the bike they are. They're trying to accumulate, they're trying to accumulate 90 and 66 calories, each athlete having to get either 30 or 22, depending on if you're male or female. And you can only be accumulating those calories so long as one of your teammates is holding two kettlebells overhead, 16 kg kettlebells for the ladies, 24 for the gentlemen. All the while, your third teammate is accumulating 105 toes to bar, 35 reps each. So we're gonna attack your quads, your midline, your shoulders. What's left, rookie? Well, your your soul? You, oh, your soul will be crushed before you get to the end anyway. But I love how Rob Forte has designed the entire weekend. You're gonna be just tested on various elements all the way through. Nothing that's gonna stop you doing something the next day, but enough work that's gonna pull you up probably a little sore each day after. Yep. Oh, you can see shoulders and midline shaking, holding those kettlebells overhead. It's not a hard thing to do. I want you to stand here and hold an object. Right. It doesn't seem it's, like a difficult simple. task. But you put in that load and you put in kettlebells as well, probably a little bit easier than dumbbells because you can use that arm to rest that weight against your forearm. But still, your midline, as you mentioned, and that shoulder fatigue is going to be massive, especially after doing some toes to bar, and your legs are gonna be busted from doing the bike and from the running the sand this morning. Well, and it's always harder to hold anything isometrically when you're out of breath. So you have to be careful about going too fast on the bike, because it makes it a lot harder to hold, harder to hold anything once you can't breathe. And just a heads up for the individual competition. Jake Douglas, unfortunately, has officially withdrawn now. And that is sad to see big Jake Trap Daddy Douglas gone. But Chandler Smith, the roar of the crowd. And didn't he get a roar last oh. year for the snatch event? And the, he wants more. The roof almost came <laughs> off this building. Look at how fast he is over that box. Emily Rethwell in the lane adjacent, getting to work first. Chandler, one of the best deadlifters in our sport. 27 deadlifts to finish out. You gotta assume he, if anybody could go unbroken, it's, it'd be Chandler. I have no doubt he's going to go unbroken. Great battle with the California girls and next Letica Gold. But no one in the male division catching Chandler Smith. Well, I think the ombre hombres want to catch up on their points. You know, the frog grips have five points on them. They want those five points back. Chandler Smith coasting over the line, doing it easy. Christy Hollard for next Letica Gold now pulling ahead of Emily Rethwell in the orange and Justine Beat from the Fit Mummers. Bailey Martin, first athlete over the line for team frog grips. Christy Hollard in for next Letica Gold. And bodies strewn oh. all over the place. <laughs> summer upright, summer otherwise. Noah Olsen is moving so fast. And Emily Redwell has finished hers. Well, Noah nearly beat Emily. Yeah, exactly. Two for one. That puts Jesse Smith on the bar. And Tola's at the deadlifts now. Jay Crouch about to come over the line for frog grips. Tola, Maracanyo. Oh, smooth, steady. This is so light for him. 
He's a longer athlete, though, so there's a little more travel time now, for him. But do you know what he's doing? He's having a look at the clock, and he's pacing exactly on what frog grips are doing so he knows what pace to go. That's experience right there. That's a team athlete. Jali Mansi moving fast as well. Amy Alessi home for Nextletica goal. Granny Chalice at the top, but Tola Moracano for the Ombre Hombres in six minutes. What? That's, that's almost a minute faster than the previous best time from Star Jesse Street Smith, Gold. second home. Royce Dunn home. Joel Malinia home. Now Ricky's chance to send it. He's far right of screen currently. Another great athlete on the barbell to finish, Danny Spiegel. And she's got a little ground to make up on that next Letica gold. Bryony Chalice finishes and rounds off a good day for next Letica gold. Danny Spiegel is doing this easy in front. Alethea Boone, iconic on this arena. Look at Danny pick, picking up speed <laughs> on her last five reps. Unbroken. Oh, and it's a race. Oh. <laughs> what a finish. Oh, fitness alley. It's a face plant to finish. We'll have to go to the chip timers for that one. Alethea Boone coming over for the Fit Mamas. We still have four and a half minutes of our time cap. Yeah. A couple of athletes still on the burpee box jump overs. Torian Gold and Renegade Girly Pops. Generalis, front of screen, finishing up for the Renegade Girly Pops. Costerillic, the Dignus Athletica, getting his job done. Gabby Napa, about to finish off her last couple of reps for the Burpee Box jump over. Jesse Ward is all done. Star Strength Neon. Gabby Napa. Now, she can snatch 100. She can easily deadlift 70, I can tell you. I would think so. It's a little different when you're out of breath, though, rookie. Uh, she looks smooth. Though. I think she'll get her breath back while she's doing yeah, that's this. That's what it looks like. It's the burpees she didn't like. Torian Gold, Renegade, Girly Pops, our final two teams on the competition floor. And who else would you expect to be there I was cheering people on? Of course it's Noah. Spirit of the Games 2022. Torian Gold. Wrap up day one with a 9.36 finish. Gabby Napper only a few reps away. Doesn't look like she's oh. too well. That's not Cactus, is that Cactus? Yeah, oh, that's just, uh, actually, I'll think of another word for that one. Okay. She's still upright, so not completely Cactus. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna learn this one. All these athletes cheering her on. The last Look couple. Noah. Noah urging. And you can hear him, they respond. Gabby Napa, the last couple of reps to finish off team competition for day one for 2023 Down Under Championship. And the Renegade Girly Pops. Get done still with 90 seconds on the time cap.
Bravo is ace. I said early on there was a lot of fitness on the floor, and fitness was definitely made from both the California girls and the hombre hombres. No surprise there. After taking second place this morning, Chandler, Noah, and Tola were out for blood and 100 points, and that's exactly what they got. California girls, two for two today. Chandler Smith so fast on not only those burpee box jump overs, but of course handling that barbell with no problem. Hey, you can jump out of a plane, you can do this. I'm gonna have to disagree. <laughs> Well, jumping out of a plane's easy. You just got to go one way and it's out and down. I don't know fast. what's harder, actually. I don't know. I think I would rather fitness for time than jump out of a plane. Tola bringing home the 100 points for the hombre hombres. And next, Letica Gold. Grabbing some needed points. So you come all the way here. I don't know how your jet lag is currently. These athletes have come out here a couple of days ago. They're doing all these activities, paddleboarding, skydiving, surfing, all this sort of stuff. Is your body feeling good at this stage, your body in particular? You've done a little bit of surfing? Yeah, yeah, and we got a workout in, and yeah, I mean, for, for the travel and how old I am and all that stuff, yeah, I feel pretty good. Well, Maybe it's just because I'm compared to you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what, oh, oh, I'm just busted, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> No, you have more energy than anybody I know, rookie. <laughs> you do. I doubt that. It's like my coffee consumption, I think. But anyway. However, you, however, <laughs> you got to get there. Exactly. But you, you do all that sort of stuff, and the fatigue levels. We'll just see how that responds tomorrow when yep. they come to the competition floor. But let's head down to Bella Martin now with some very special international guests. Mm. Special guest to me, special guest here, down under the Ombre Ombres, another iteration of the boys. You love to see it. First thing, Chandler, is skydiving and surfing maybe something we're going to add to our pre-comp ritual now? Yeah, I think pre-comp is really important to get sports specific, and it doesn't get much more sports specific than skydiving, so that, uh, that adrenaline rush and the, the feel that you have out there in the sky is the exact same as doing Fran, so yeah, I think I'll start to incorporate a little bit more. I love to see it. We can go in all order, as you guys said. Tola, you're the new add to the Noah Chandler show. How did you get to be on this team, and how does it feel to be on an iconic The Boys squad? Not quite sure how I got on the team, but I'm happy to be here. Uh, it feels great. You know, these are Closer. amazing athletes that I've looked up to for a long time, and to be on a team with them is, uh, you know, really, really great. Noah, something I've loved about you, every time I see you on the floor, you're having fun. You're always playing with the crowd, and you're one of those people that when you see you on the floor, I can rely on you to bring me energy. How does it feel to be down under with this Australian energy and vibe here this weekend? Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Ooh, this mic's the loudest of them all. Um, I definitely try to have as much fun as possible. I feel like if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then it's not going to last very long, and I've been doing it for a long time, so being able to balance the hard work with having a lot of fun is very important. And the Australian crowd is amazing. I was reading my reflection from last year, and I had said that we love the Australian people, that they were a very kind, supportive, energetic group. So we're happy to be back. Thanks for having us, guys. It is great to have all three of them here. Tola, that's all right. You can join their team. You're in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't wonder why he got added in, even if he does. But I mean, you think team athletes after, you know, what Tola's done, I think he was a natural addition to that team. Oh, and it's great to have him out here as well. And I think he compliments their team extremely well. What a day one we've had so far. <laughs> team Frog Crips, after event number one, there was only about 10 seconds between the two. Yeah, that was great for them. But some great fitnessing done. We've had a broad range of events as well, which has been even better. Some great tests outside. We're inside tomorrow. Guess what? Inside, outside, inside. I love it. So we're going to change things it. up again. 
And I love today, was one was long and kind of grueling, a uh, little lower power output. When you think about that run, this one, high power output, it was fast, it was furious. So like you said, Rookie, two really great tests, a great way to start. Day one of competition, they shouldn't be too wrecked for tomorrow, but I'm saying that from the booth, so what do I know? <laughs> exactly right. So some different events tomorrow. We've got some handstand slalom walking. We've got some kettlebell work, some snatches, and some farmer's carry, which you don't often see in competition either. And then we're going to come back here on the floor as well and do some more amazing stuff. This crowd is going to get bigger and bigger. Today, a working day, so a great crowd in for a Friday. So Saturday, Sunday is going to be massive. So I can't wait to kick things off tomorrow. I agree. So excited. And you know what they say, day two is always moving day. This is when you pick up all the points you need to put yourself in position for a podium finish on the weekend. Well, thank you for joining us on day one of the Down Under Championship for 2023. What an iconic event we have had to start the day. We're in the arena to finish things off today. We've seen some amazing performances and some people really test their boundaries on behalf of Bella Martin, Annie Sakamoto. I am Jeremy Austin, and we will see you all bright and early tomorrow morning.